Yep. Awesome. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Please silence all cell phones. If you wish to speak, please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium, adjust the microphone, and then state your name and address for the record. You are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual. Both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak, which usually runs between three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial, conduct is formal, and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. Thank you. Madam Secretary, do we have a quorum? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, with six members present, we do. Thank you very much. Do we have proof of publication of the notification of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, it was published on Thursday, October 6, 2022, in the Escambia County Sun Press. And item number four, we'll postponed to the next meeting because the minutes are not ready. That's correct, sir. We were just here last week. That did not give sufficient time to produce the minutes. Not a problem. We'll move to item five, which is public forum. It's an opportunity for the general public to come before the board on any item that's not on the agenda. I have one speaker request form, Mr. Logan Gray. Mr. Gray, if you will come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. My name is Logan Gray. I live at 120 Grandview Drive, Titus, Alabama. The property in question is at 1809 East Bar Street, and this has been before the board through the uh, probable cause hearing and disciplinary hearing. The point I want to make is on the Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. This group came together on January 30th of 2019. The lawyer Charles Liveris was the agent that put it together. The managers were Genesis Properties and Development, which is owned by Blaine Flynn and Kevin Stevens. And I think that's an important point here because they stayed as managers, managers of this company until April of 26, when according to SunBiz, the Secretary of State's website, they were removed. In other words, these folks were involved with this company from January 30th of 19 to April 26th of 2022. The reason I bring this up is because when we first met with Lacoste, he emphasized his relationship with these two gentlemen, particularly Blaine Flynn, because Mr. Flynn, I believe at that time, was president of the local Home Builders Association. Now, where I come from, being the president of a Home Builders Association is a major accomplishment. It means that the members of your profession think a lot of you, you're active in that community and you're someone special, quite frankly. And that did add a lot of credibility to you choosing Lacoste. Next thing I'd like to talk to you about is Jesse Lacoste himself. At our first probable cause hearing, which was in March, he lied to this board under oath. Mr. Chairman, he lied directly to you when you mm -hmm. asked him about that fence. Mr. Bell, he lied directly to you when you asked him about those expenses and why he hadn't provided them. And he said, oh, I provided them to the nobles and then the, uh, the what do you call it, the portal, I believe, which was kind of a hit and miss operation. The next time we have a 
occasion to hear about him was in May was when our um, uh, disciplinary hearing came about. He was not present, but he had an attorney come up, and his attorney said he was not there for health reasons. I tried to introduce a document that would explain those health reasons. The fact of the matter was he had been arrested for the second time for child abuse. He had posted bond, and that bond had been revoked. So he was either to turn himself in or to get arrested. Mr. Larry Downs, who was on the board at that time, asked that it be postponed until we could... Uh, so he could talk to him and have conversation with him about it. Mr. Waters, I think, at that time said no, said he would do it, but that would if he didn't show up next time, there would be no excuses and we'd proceed, which did happen. The next time Mr. Klaus blessed this room was here in September when he accused the staff of not doing their jobs with notification and they had to, and you all had to call them in, put them under oath, and swear that they had done everything right. The point here that I'm trying to make is Mr. Lacoste is not shackled by the truth. The last comment I have is that on our restitution, we tried to hammer it out right then, and we came up with around $90,000. Like Mr. Lister was involved, did the math on it, and at that time we were saying that there was, these really weren't good figures. For example, we, I think, allowed $15,000 for the roof because at that time we understood the contractor had told us he had not been paid. Later we found out from the authorities that he had been paid $5,000. So in our calculations, we had 15000 allowed for the roof when in fact 5000 of it was paid. There's a $10,000 discrepancy right there. So our last request, or our current request, is that when we get finished bringing this house to pre-loss condition, that we be able to submit to you an updated loss that can be attributed factually provable to uh, Lacoste Construction, LLC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, board members. You'll be allowed to do that. Thank you. Board Secretary status report. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I would like to welcome Miss Mary Jordan to the board. She was appointed um, this previous week by the Board of County Commissioners, and she was so kind to join us today, even though she didn't have to be here till next month. So, welcome. <laughs> That's Glad it. to have you here. You're in for a ride. <laughs> All right, we'll move to item seven, one, probable cause. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor competency board complaint number 2208144COM. It's in regard to Zachary London, the homeowner complainant at 507. Live Oak Avenue, Pensacola, Florida, 32507. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is the complainant, Mr. London, present? Mr. London does not appear to be present. Is the respondent, Mr. Banks, present? Mr. Banks is not present. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to provide testimony for this particular hearing? No one else wishes to provide testimony. So at this time, I'm going to swear in, have Miss Reber sworn in, and she will remain sworn in for all of these cases moving forward, okay? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Thank you. Miss Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? It was on August 22nd, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about this case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about this case? I, he did not respond. Ms. Mr. London, the complainant? The complainant. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I apologize. Yes, he did. Uh, I was able to communicate with him. And is, um, were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? 
He did not respond. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? Yes, it is. Did the respondent provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did not provide anything. Were permits pulled and if so, when and what are their status? Uh, permit was pulled. Um, this is actually a owner builder project. Um, and with regard to the work that Banks was hired to do, there was just a plumbing permit pulled on May 10th, 2022, which passed a rough end on May 13th, 2022. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scammon County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 2208144COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Being done, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being done, the motion is approved for entering the evidence. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? And if so, please state each violation and your justification for the violation. Uh, yes, I was. The alleged violations of code section 1837C8. Uh, uh, this is abandonment he uh, the respondent I apologize uh, left the project around July of 2022 code section 1837 C11 the respondent received um, the funds but did not complete the job Code section 1837 9, I'm sorry, 1837 D 9B. Uh, Banks is was not authorized to do this type of work. He was contracted to do plumbing and electrical work, which he in turn subbed out. Because no parties are present, that concludes staff's presentation of the case. Entertain a motion to take it to a disciplinary hearing if there's just cause. A motion to take it to a disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor. I do have a question. It says uh, 1837C8 about being abandoned after 90 days. And I was trying to find the 90 day span here that she was okay. talking about. So he did not return to the work. I mean, did not return to the job site after July of this year from July to present is in excess of 90 days. Okay. The, the date of the complainant was at 90 days. That's, that's why I was. That's right. During but the, it don't matter. It's like, okay. Gotcha. Thank during you. During the, the investigation, it exceeded the 90 days. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to send it to disciplinary hearing is approved. Item 7-2. Yes, item 7-2, Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2209158COM. It's in regard to Mark and Misty Green, the homeowner's complainants at 1117 Signal Hill Lane in Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Is Are the complainants, Mr. and Mrs. Green, present? Yes. Awesome. Are you going to provide testimony in regard to this case? 
Awesome. Is the respondent, Mr. Banks, present? Be noted, Mr. Banks is not present. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to provide testimony for this particular hearing? All right. Mr. and Ms. Green, if you could please come forward and be sworn in. And just a reminder that Ms. Reber is still sworn in. If you could just state your name and addresses. Mark Green, 1117 Signal Hill Lane, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Misty Green, Pensacola, Florida, 1117 Signal Hill Lane. Perfect. Please raise your right hands to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. Awesome. So, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was August 29th, 2022. And were you able to communicate with complainants about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? He did not respond. Did the complainants provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? Yes, they did and it is attached. Did the respondent provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did not respond. Were permits pulled? And if so, when and what are their status? Uh, there was a permit for an alteration that was pulled on September 28, 2021. There were no inspections performed and the permit was voided by the building official on August 11th, 2022 for revocation of bank's license. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. One five eight COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Motion is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion passes and evidence is submitted. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and the justification. Uh, yes, I was. Code section 1837C8, the last time any work was performed on the Greens home was May 17th of 2022. Code section 1837C11, the Greens provided banks a 50% deposit and there was minimal work performed on their home. Code section 1837D9J, bank's contract did not contain the required verbiage notifying the Greens of the residential, I'm sorry, the uh, construction recovery fund. Thank you. Mr. and Ms. Green, this is your opportunity to address the board. First, I would like to say um, this is our 20th wedding anniversary. Aww. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Well, we were supposed to be in Vegas celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary, Aww. so we're celebrating it with everyone here, and you can tell we're not very happy. <laughs> well, Vegas doesn't have any, any uh, beaches like we do. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, as far as when we signed the contract in April um, of 2021 on the 29th, he mentioned that because he was so busy that we he wouldn't be able to put us on the books until September, I believe it was the 20th of 2021. But the actual demo didn't begin until November the 11th. And the only thing that was that was of 2021, the only thing that he actually did or his workers did was demo. When it came time, we were working with his 
um, designer, interior designer. We met with the designer on one occasion, two occasions? Two occasions. Two occasions. And she mentioned that she would have to um, speak with Matt when we went to pick out materials for like her countertops, tile, all of that, that she would have to speak to Matt to see what was covered under the contract and the, any overage we would be responsible for. They went radio silent in January. So when it came time to purchase materials, we didn't hear anything from them. We reached out to them, went by, we don't live far from their new location, their business, which is now, I think was in auction. <laughs> And we would go by there to find out the status of our renovation. We got excuses. Um, so, and they still have two of our working, um, copies of our working blueprints. We did retrieve one that actually had, I think it had the, when the permits were, were submitted. But anytime we would try to reach out, we wouldn't hear anything. They did send the demo guy out to complete our bathroom. What may, um, that was may, the last time. That was the last time. Then any time when it came to purchasing materials, moving forward, we heard nothing. Sorry you had to go through it. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> you know the stories, you've heard the stories, but it is wide reaching. I mean, our son is not even living with us. He's living with relatives. Um, we have to pay rent on him living there. Uh, we are still paying for a storage unit. We don't have a kitchen, so we have to spend extra money on eating out or doing takeout. We can grill. Yeah, I mean, it's just extensive. And we've been living that way for over a year now. Yes. Yeah. Board, have any more questions? Yeah, of course. Did you have your own blueprints done, or did he have them done? We had our own blueprints done. We spent fourteen hundred dollars okay. on having our own, own blueprints. And he still has two sets. Yes, of our and this has been a work in progress. I mean, it's been years we've been trying to renovate this house. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? Being none. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Make we do motion. what we can do. I'll go ahead and make a motion to move this to disciplinary hearings based on the alleged violations. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion to move to disciplinary hearing is approved. Item 7-3. Yes, sir, Chair. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, State Registered License Number RR2828-12001, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2208143-COM. It's in regard to Joseph and Terry Marshall, Homeowner Complainant, 1601 Spalding Circle, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Are the complainants, Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, present? Yes. Awesome. Are you going to provide testimony for the hearing today? Yes, ma'am. Cool. Is the respondent, Mr. Banks, present? Again, Mr. Banks is not present. Is there anyone else in the audience that will pro wishes to provide testimony for this particular hearing? All right. <clears throat> Mr. Marshall, if you could please step forward. We're going to have you sworn in, and then again, Ms. Reber is still sworn in. If you could state your name and address. My name is Joseph Lewis Marshall. My address is 1601 Spalding Circle, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am, I do. Thank you. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was August 19th of 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? There was no response. 
Did the complainant provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? They did, and it is attached. Did the respondent provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? No documentation was provided. Were permits pulled, and if so, when and what are their statuses? Uh, the marshals started with a owner-builder permit, which banks uh, assumed on August 6th of 2022. The only inspection that was performed was a failed footing inspection. The permit was voided by the Scamby County building official on August 11th, 2022 for the revocation of Banks license. Staff would request at this time that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scamby County bid staff concerning contractor Compsy board complaints and investigations regarding contractor Matthew Banks case number 2208143COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved for submittal for evidence. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? And if so, please state each violation and your justification. I was. Code section 1837C8, banks commenced work on the property in late May of 2022. Um, basically, by April, the only work that had been completed was demolishing a side car carport and attempting to dig the footers on three separate occasions. You mean by May? I may. I apologize, May. Code section 1837 C11. The marshals paid banks 50% of the total contract amount, which was $52,500. Uh, and there was minimal work performed for the deposit of $26,250 that was made. Code section 1837D9J, the contract did not contain the required verbiage notifying the marshals of the construction recovery fund. Mr. Marshall, this is your opportunity to address the board. <laughs> Thank you so much. Greetings to you all. Um, I do apologize for my wife's lack of presence. She had work obligations that she had to go to. However, I informed her I think I can handle this. And so here I am. Um, Mr. Banks was recommended to us um, to be our contractor. We were simply um, staying in the closet for all of my wife's clothes. And um, with that being said, it was on February the 3rd, um, 2022, that we initially signed the contract with Matt Banks. And it was um, during that time soon thereafter that as another complainant stated, the interior decorator came out and she communed with us, conversated, and all of this wonderful things that they're gonna do um, to help with our addition or what have you. And then soon thereafter, about, well, not about, it was on April the 11th. That was when so-called work began after my wife was hounding him because she did not want to get me involved. And while hounding him, he, the commencement was simply put in a sign in our front yard of uh, Banks Construction. Um, that was his start, if you will. Um, soon thereafter that, he did demolish um, the porch on the side of our home. And it's already been stated that he came back on three different occasions, guys trying to dig a footer or what have you, um, which of course it failed. I do want to add, if I could, that one of the things that actually was troublesome for me, I happened to be a pastor, and he sat in my living room and also attended our services online, 
and I had the opportunity to pray with him and his family um, because he asked me to, um, wanted me to act as a mentor to him. And I continued to pour my heart out to him during that time um, of which he basically abandoned um, the property in that regard. And we have not heard from Mr. Banks since. Furthermore, um, there has also been um, efforts to reach out to him, of course, that has not um, brought fruition. And last but not least, we presently right now, 40% of the side of our home, all of the bricks are gone. Um, the paper part, I'm not a builder. All of it, it's exposed. We have lizards and frogs and ants and other pests coming into my um, game room. I have three cracks from the bottom of the floor all the way to the ceiling that's starting. I don't know if it's gonna fall any day now. Um, my daughter can't practice her color guard of which she's a captain because she's afraid that the ceiling is gonna fall because again, from the demolishing, it was done so haphazardly. So that's where we are right now. And I'm standing here hopefully, hopefully you guys can do something about the situation. Thank you. We'll do what we can. Yes, sir. Question. Yes, sir. You pulled your own permit initially? Initially, yes, sir. And we converted it over to Mr. Banks. So you didn't know Mr. Banks when you pulled the permit? Or at, at all, no, sir. So, but he came in and, and he assumed the permit, put it in his name? Yes, sir. Did you have a question? So was there any, you had the permit, but was there any work commenced before Mr. Banks? None at all. None at all? None at all. Just the permits always placed? Yes, sir. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll do what we can do. Yes, sir. Make a motion to move to disciplinary, hear uh, disciplinary sure. hearing based on the uh, complaint as presented violation. by violation as committed as presented by staff we have a motion do we have a second second motion made and second any further discussion being none all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed like sign being none the motion to move to disciplinary hearing for this case is approved item seven four Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828-12001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208-153, COM. It's in regard to Cecily Tart, homeowner complainant, 3708 North 12th Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. This is within the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Ms. Tart, are you present today? Yes. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes. Mr. Banks, are you present? Be noted, Mr. Banks is not present. Ms. Tart, if you could please come forward. You're going to be sworn in. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber remains sworn in. Ms. Tart, if you could state your name and address. Yes, my name is Cecily Tart, 3708 North 12th Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. Thank you. You saw me swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was August 17th, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? There was no response. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, she did and it is attached. Did the pro respondent provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? No documentation provided. Were permits pulled? If so, when and what are their statuses? There were no permits pulled. Okay. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. 
I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Matthew Banks case number 2208153COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign, being none, the motion to move into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Code section 1837 C8, Ms. Tart entered into the contract with banks for a bathroom renovation. Uh, the total amount of the work was $21,000. $800. Uh, Ms. Tart paid a 50% deposit of $10,900 on October 20th. Work did not commence until February 23, 2022, with the uh, plumbing starting on May 3rd, 2022. After that date, there was no additional work performed. Code section 1837C11, minimal amount of work was performed, uh, just demolition for the 50% deposit of $10,900. Code section 1837D9, the contract did not contain the proper information uh, explaining to Ms. Tart about the residential recovery fund. Ms. Tart, this is your opportunity to address the board. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so October 2021, I met with Matt um, on the 20th of, the, of that month and he, him and my mom, well his mom and my mom, they knew each other from working together, so that's why she spoke highly of him, and that's how I went on to hire Matt. So that day, um, we actually stayed next door to his uncle, and he knew where we lived. He came over to get the check, 10900 I wrote to him on that day to do the renovations of two bathrooms um, off of 12th Avenue. So, uh, Actually, I haven't even moved into the house because we still don't have bathrooms. Um, and he was supposed to totally, completely gut the bathrooms, demo it all down to studs, and then put everything back together, tile, flooring, vanity, shower, and do all of that. So um, I had one project manager and I was in contact with him and I was able to, to talk to him and kind of get things rolling around February-ish. We were supposed to start in January, but um, they showed up February, did the demo, and uh, did the plumbing around March. They finished up that part, but it hadn't returned. And um, after several, you know, trying to go back and forth with them, trying to get start dates back going on, and I hadn't heard anything after the my project manager was let go. Um, I ended up purchasing my own towel, just trying to get things moving along. They were supposed to pay for it, but they didn't pay for it. So I went ahead and purchased it from ProSource, and that was like $1,200 or so. And um, really, they just kind of just left the project. Um, it was a lot of correspondence going back and forth with his, um, uh, with the secretary but um, I haven't heard anything back from him. He actually showed up to the house August the 9th, I think the day before he turned himself in, um, because my mom reached out to his mom. It's like, hey, what's going on? Um, we need to get this thing rolling. But he showed up and uh, he left the, you know, I don't know what he was showing up for at that time. So and that's, that's pretty much it. Any questions? Make a motion. We move this to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations presented by staff. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? 
Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing of this case is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7-5. Yes, sir, Chair. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828-12001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2209-161-COM. It's in regard to John and Angie Purvis, homeowner complainants at 5012 Skylark Court, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Our, um, are John and Angie Purvis present? Are you going to provide testimony today? Thank you. Is Mr. Banks present? Again, Mr. Banks is not present. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to provide testimony for this hearing? No other people. Mr. and Ms. Purvis, if you could please come forward and be sworn in. And as a reminder, Ms. Reber is still sworn in. You could state your name and address for the record. I'm Angie Purvis at 5012 Skylark Court, Pensacola, Florida, 32505. And John Purvis, uh, 5012 Skylark Court, Pensacola. Thank you. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn, please? Do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. do. Thank you. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board? And if so, on what date? Yes, it was August 28th, 2022. Were you able to communicate with the purposes about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with Mr. Banks about the case? There was no response. Did, did the purposes provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, they did and it is attached. Did Mr. Banks provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did not provide anything. Were permits pulled? If so, when and what are their status? There were no permits pulled. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Iskema County bid staff concerning contractor Compsy board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 2209161COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move into evidence is approved. We're having some technical difficulties. Hang on just a moment. Slow electrons this morning. Uh, well, uh, Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations? If so, can you please state each violation and the justification? Yes, I was. Code section 1837 C8, the purposes entered into a kitchen renovation contract in July of 2021 with a start date of November 10, 2021. The total amount of the contract was $31,000. The Purvis paid a 50% deposit of $15,500 on August 3rd of 2021. No work was ever performed on the project. Code section 1837 C11. Uh, deposit was made $15,500. The um, banks never performed any services for that money. Code section 1837 D9J, the contract did not retain, uh, contain the required verbiage notifying the purposes of the construction recovery fund. Mr. 
Mr. and Ms. Purvis, this is your opportunity to address the board. Thank you. How are you? Well, we're, we're okay. <laughs> Better than not us. Not so sure about you. Better than us. So, yes, we started a contract with Matthew Banks for a full kitchen renovation. They're going to take out all our cabinets, just completely redo our kitchen. Um, so when we signed the contract, we were given a start date, but then I had to order kitchen appliances, which, as you know, was sit back and wait. So my kitchen appliances were trickling in so we didn't really we weren't aware that there were problems with banks they did send a designer to help make a design for my kitchen and as I saw that my appliances were getting closer to being fulfilled I reached out to him and I said look it's been months we should have this thing as soon as my appliances are in we need to be ready to go so I need to get this design finalized and uh, so finally the, the designer did come back out and we kind of decided what the final look would be for the kitchen and what we needed to have for our cabinets and all. And so then I kept saying, look, my last appliance is coming in. It'll be here in April. We need to be ready to go. And so I just kept pushing them. We had a big <coughs> uh, birthday party we were going to have, Labor Day. Can we get this done? So I was really just pushing for, we need a start date. I need a start date. So they gave me a start date for June, and by then I was starting to hear, you know, that there were problems. So someone recommended to me that do not let them re uh, demo your kitchen unless you know your cabinets are ready to go in right away. So I reached back out and I said, look, I don't want, I'd rather have a bad kitchen than no kitchen. I don't want my kitchen demoed till I know my cabinets are ready to go in immediately following. Oh, well, we'll reach out to the cabinet people and we'll let you know. So we'll just, so we canceled the demo because that's all they were going to do is demo my kitchen and I would have no kitchen at this point. So again, reaching out, do we how you know, so then they have a builder trend where that's kind of like where you go back and forth and they'd say, uh, update on your renovation. Yeah, and there was never an update. There was just, we were just sitting back, no one, no contact. Um, the only one that did anything was the designer. She did a design and that was it. Um, so, and just no communication. Then everything imploded and, you know, he has been arrested and we have no kitchen. I have a bad kitchen, but at least I have a kitchen, so. Gas works? <laughs> well, we don't have gas. No, I have no oven. I'm cooking on a uh, convection countertop oven. It's pretty crazy, but I can do it. Yeah, that was part of the, the renovation. <laughs> so. I have appliances yeah, sitting at Ferguson Enterprises yeah. waiting to be installed that I can't use. So, yeah. Any further questions? Okay. Yep. Make a motion to move to disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations presented by staff. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing for this case is approved. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And we'll do what we can. All right. Thank we you. appreciate you. I mean, we appreciate it. Civic clerk is what we rely on, so we're trying to get it to come back up, but it doesn't seem to want to load for either one of us, so if you'll just give us a minute. If not, we'll, we'll have I'll to entertain a five-minute recess. That Thank sounds you. like a plan. Thank you. If we can get the electrons going. We got...
We're back in session. And again, sir, we are going to be working off of our paper agendas. Item 7-6. Yes, sir. Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State Registered License Number RR-282812-001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2209-163-COM. It's in regard to Mike Woods, the homeowner complainant at 8274 Foxtel Loop, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Woods, are you present? Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Thank you. Mr. Banks, are you present? Again, Mr. Banks is not present. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to provide testimony for this particular hearing? All right. No response. Um, Mr. Woods, if you could please come forward, we're going to get you sworn in. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber is still sworn in. If you could state your name and address for the record. Uh, Mike Woods, 8274 Foxtel Loop, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was, August 10th of 2022. Were you able to communicate with Mr. Woods about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with Mr. Banks about the case? There was no response. Did Mr. Woods provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup for the case? Yes, he did, and it is attached. Did Mr. Banks provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? No documentation was provided. Were permits pulled? If so, when and what are their status? There were no permits pulled. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County bid staff concerning contractor Compsy board complaints and investigations regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 2209163COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C8. Mr. Woods entered into a contract with Banks on August 5th, 2021 for a home renovation. The total cost of the contract was $106,400. Mr. Woods paid a deposit of $53,200 on August 4th, 2021. Banks has never performed any services. Code section 1837C11. Uh, as I stated, Mr. Banks has never performed any services for the deposit of $53,200. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. There was no permits applied for the project. On July 28th of 2022, Mr. Woods, through his counsel, sent a certified termination letter in a demand of the, re the refund deposit. Code section 1837D9J, the contract did not contain the verbiage advising Mr. Woods of the construction recovery fund. As you all can see, we were able to get it back up and running, so we're able to view the documents. Um, Mr. Woods? This is your opportunity to address the board. 
Good morning, gentlemen and lady. Um, so this is a pretty open shut case. I, I, I went and got plans, or and I didn't personally get plans, but the plans were provided to me. It took months to get those plans. It seemed like he was dragging his feet. Uh, I confronted Mr. Banks uh, prior to the termination, uh, prior to July for termination of the contract to get my refund uh, monies back, and he refused. Um, moving forward, I, I was left no other means but to file a termination with an attorney, which we've done so. Um, it's kind of an open shut case. I'm thankful that he did no work on my property uh, for good reason, as I listened to everybody's testimony this morning. And thank God I'm not getting a kitchen remodel because it seems like the first thing he does is rip everything out and doesn't do anything else. So uh, that being said, uh, this is where I stand. And I look to you, Mr. Matthews, before you say uh, I will do, we will do what we can do. I'd like to know what you can do. If you've sat here long enough, you know what we can do. I will sit here long enough. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make a motion we move to disciplinary hearings based on the alleged violations presented by staff. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing for this case is approved. That's the next step. Thank you, sir. Item seven eight no seven seven excuse me. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, State Registered License Number RR two eight two eight one two zero zero one, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number two two zero eight one four seven COM. It's in regard to James and Cami Bowley, homeowner complainants at 9919 Box Elder Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Are the Bowleys present? Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Thank you. Is it Mr. Banks present? <coughs> Again, Mr. Banks is not present. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to provide testimony for this hearing, for this particular hearing? N no response. Mr. and Ms. Bowley, if you could please come to the front and be sworn in. And again, Ms. Reber is still sworn in. Please provide your name, names and address for the record. No, James Bowley, 9919 Box Elder Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. Cammie Bowley, 9919 Box Elder Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, Thank you. Ms. Uh, oh. <laughs> Reber, truth, truth, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was August 19th of 2022. Were you able to communicate with the Bowleys about the, com about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with Mr. Banks about the case? There was no response. Did the Bullies provide uh, supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, they did and it is attached. Did Mr. Banks provide any supporting documentation and is it attached? No, he did not. I well, move that all documents and no. documentation. Please. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Just a second. Okay. Were right. permits pulled first? <laughs> Were permits pulled and if so, <laughs> When and what is their status? There were no permits pulled. All right, now staff requests that the documentation attached to the agenda be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scamba County bid staff concerning contractor Compsy board complaints and investigations regarding contractor Matthew Banks, case number 2208147COEM be entered into evidence and for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion to move into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations? If so, can you state each violation and your justification? Yes, I was. Code section 1837C8, 
the Bullies entered into a contract on February 4th, 2022 for a master bath renovation. Total cost of the work contained was $15,100. The Bullies paid a 50% deposit of $7,550 on February 2nd, 2022. No work ever commenced on their home. Code section 1837C11. The Bowleys again paid a $7,550 deposit and uh, no, no work ever commenced. Code section 1837D9J. The contract did not contain the required verbiage advising the Bowleys of the Florida Construction Recovery Fund. Mr. and Ms. Bowley, it's your opportunity to address the board. Um, after many months after we um, started the contract with Matthew, um, we, we, I finally saw what was happening and he sent us a start date on August 10th of this year, which was the day that he was losing his license, I believe. He sent us a demo date. For he sent us a, a start date, a demo date, on August 10th in the afternoon. <laughs> and on the 12th, I responded because we were talking. I said, we said, hey, we're not going to let this happen. I responded and said, hey, I would like my money back. And the very next response on that same day, on the 12th, I believe, was um, we're in bankruptcy. And that's basically what it was. So um, <clears throat> it's like I got a demo date. The day he, he knew he was losing his license that day. Yeah. And in that, on that afternoon, he sent us a start date. I mean, the rest of it is, is just, you know, no work performed at all. Oh, yeah. We did meet with a, a designer, but there was never materials picked, no, no final plans. So. You were lucky. Yep. yep. Any further questions? I make a motion to move to this very hearing based on the alleged violations presented by staff. Second. Motion made and second to move the disciplinary hearing. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move the disciplinary hearing for this case is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7 8. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We're switching gears. This item has to do with Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, State Registered License Number RG 2911039980, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2208125COM. It's in regard to Mike and Judy Stevens, the homeowner complainants at 945 West Michigan Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Are the Stevens present? Yes. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Awesome. Is Mr. Lacoste present? Miss, Mr. Lacoste is present. Are you going to provide t testimony for this hearing today? I'll speak up whenever question. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to provide testimony for this particular hearing? No one else is present. Mr. Lacoste, Ms. Stevens, if you could please stand and be sworn in. And Ms. Rebeer, remain sworn in. If you could state your name and address for the record, Ms. My yes. name is Judy Stevens. Uh, my address is 3009 High Point Place, but the job site was actually the 945 West Michigan Avenue. It's a commercial complex. Thank you. Mr. Lacoste? Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Jesse Lacoste, 5974 Choo Choo Circle, North Florida. Thank you. Would you raise your right hands to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was on August 9th of 2022. Were you able to communicate with Ms. Stevens about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with Mr. Lacoste about the case? 
Yes, I was. Did the did Miss Stevens provide any supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup for the case? Yes, she did, and it is attached. Did Mr. Lacoste provide any supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Mr. Lacoste issued a statement via email and regarding the case, and it is attached to the agenda. Were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their status? There were permits uh, obtained. Um, as Ms. Stevens stated, this is a commercial building, so there were 10 alteration permits issued to Lacoste between April 7th of 2021 and July 1 of 2021. No inspections were ever done. Uh, the Stevens terminated all of the permits on June 27th, 2022. Staff would request at this time that the documentation attached to the agenda as a backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scamby County bid staff concerning contractor comps and board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 2208125COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved to enter the information into evidence for this case. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C8. The Stevens commercial property sustained damage during Hurricane Sally in September of 2021. In November of 2020, the Stevens entered into an assignment of benefits with Lacoste Construction to repair their structure. The total cost of the repair was $265,147.25. Stevens state that there were some debris, tree removal removed, tree debris removed. There was a roof installed and all units were gutted. Stevens state that no reconstructive work ever began. And after uh, June 23rd, 2022, the Stevens requested that Lacoste remove them from the AOB, get them out of the AOB. Code section 1837C11, Mr. Lacoste was paid, sorry, I may have to, Jennifer, could you refer to um, proof of payment? Okay. I apologize. We'll have to refer to the screen for it, it's what okay. was paid, and Miss Miss Stevens will testify to that. In your in your investigation notes, you state that it was two hundred sixty five thousand one hundred forty seven dollars and twenty four twenty five cents. Mm -hmm. Is that that is the amount? Okay, I misread my own notes. <laughs> Uh, Florida Statute 489-126-2A. Permits were not obtained until long after the 30-day. Uh, permits were obtained April and July of 2021. That should be it. Mark that last. 1837-D9J does not apply. So, so you're saying that that last item should not be on your That's correct. Report. Awesome. All right. Ms. Stevens, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to this case. Okay. Well, my husband could not be here because of health reasons. Um, 
we have kind of a unique situation that we found ourselves in. We've not only lost money, we continue to lose more money every month. We signed this commercial construction contract in September of 2020, and we signed the AOB in August, uh, no, November of 2020. So after gutting 10 commercial office units down to the concrete floor and the studs, Mr. Lacoste basically abandoned the job. We did, as you stated, get a new roof on one of the buildings. Um, another building that we have was approved by insurance for um, a roof, which did not get put on, which has interior damage now um, because of leaking. So, as you stated, Mr. Lacoste was paid a total of $265,147.90. I have from the insurance company what he was paid, which was $245,797.90. And then my husband wrote him two additional checks totaling $19,350. Um, because we signed this AOB, um, in addition to the commercial contract that we signed, our insurance company won't release any billback funds without a termination of the AOB signed by Mr. Lacoste. Um, I've tried to get in touch with Mr. Lacoste. Um, he refuses to do what is right or communicate, and we can't force him to sign. So, since he's lost his license in Escambia County and can't perform the job, I don't understand why he wants to continue to cause more hardship by not signing and not letting us continue on with our lives. Um, he's not just affected our lives financially, but emotionally and physically, um, and cause just untold stress. Every family here has their own story. Um, my husband has had some serious health problems for over a year that Mr. Lacoste is well aware of. He spent two months in a hospital and three and a half months in a rehab trying to regain some strength. So trying to keep added stress from him, I thought this situation with Lacoste construction was something that I could handle and keep from him. Um, until it was resolved, and then I realized, well, that's not going to be possible. I just feel like Mr. Lacoste is holding us hostage by not signing off so that we can move forward and complete this job, which is this building is our livelihood. So by letting our office units sitting there gutted, we're losing $8,600 a month every month, over a two-year period, that's $206,400, and our insurance was capped at $72,601. So not only are we continuing to lose money every month, we've also had to go to the added expense of hiring an attorney to negotiate with the insurance company to come to some resolution. I don't know, I don't know what the resolution is unless Mr. Ocas is willing to sign a termination of the assignment of benefits. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Lacoste, this is your opportunity to address the board. Morning, board. Before I dig into details, um, I would like to request a continuance for this as I am. I finally. I believe made contact with the individual that I've described in the past that ran our email and accounts and I believe I have all of the um, will have access to all of the documentation that refutes a lot of these complaints. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we deny the continuance for this case. Second. Motion made Second. and seconded. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. Mr. Lacoste. What did you do with that money? I spent it towards that project. So there's a couple of things that I jotted down very quickly. Um, as I mentioned, I don't have all that documentation present. I'm, I'm waiting on it. And we continue to dismiss continuances, so I'm not allowed to rightfully defend myself, which is not all in all shocking because I'm aware of the call that you received from Kevin Stevens, my former partner, and the including there. Mr. Claus, uh, well, let me just say, I have oh, never received a phone call from Kevin understood. Stevens. Whoa, whoa, slow down. No, no, you've accused me of something. Well, I have more to say. I have more to say. 
just like the fellow that sat in that seat before you that had a misconduct against me that was removed from this board that should have recused himself, you should have recused yourself the first time too. How? Because just like him, I have completed his failed projects and I've completed your failed projects. Mr. Lacoste. That's a fact. Mr. Dennis was not removed from this board. He was not reinstated to the board. There is a difference. An opportunity to resign. Understood. What did you do with the money? I'll, I'll get to that. That was put towards the project. That was put towards the towards project. The project. So okay, let me ask you this. A couple that, a hold couple on, hold on. Why ahead. won't you sign that document she needs? Because I'm still owed money. And I'm going to cover that in these. Oh. I don't do emotional arguments. I speak facts. So I jotted down a couple items as she was speaking. And I have utmost respect for Miss Judy, by the way. I'm not angry with her or Mr. Mike in any way. We went out of our way to do a um, good thing and, and help them. And unfortunately, with their insurance, with the way it went with many other cases, they just they didn't pay out like they don't do in most cases. Um, project total. So this is something that's been turned in since towards early on in the project was the assessed damage after we actually had an opportunity to come in and do large structural repairs um, in, in that emergency state. Um, they mentioned a roof was put on the building. Um, what wasn't mentioned is that it's a 17,000 square foot building. So we're not talking a small dwelling here. So most of those funds were ate up by the roof alone. Matter of fact, the demolition, all of the uh, mitigation work. So we're talking much more monies here than the 200 thousand dollars so some odd dollars that were paid out it's about it it's it's a eight hundred and sixty thousand dollar job roughly so that the total of these projects is always what's dismissed and not discussed in front of this board there's always this emotional suspense of this large sum was paid out what happened with it well it's about a quarter of the funds to do the job <laughs> and we're well past that point so which brings me to my next let's see uh, build back funds uh, permits of course permits were pulled on on this project um there were not the inspections because we didn't get to that point and some of the work was done as emergency work. Didn't need it. Um, brought in additional funds to client through loss of use. So I know that Miss Judy did mention some of the hardships and um, Mr. Mike has, uh, to my knowledge, been hospitalized. We've sent things up there. I, again, utmost respect for, for Mr. Mike. I hate that he's going through what he's going through. Um, it is completely separable from the project and our services as it has really nothing to do with, with our discussion here today, um, though it's a horrible situation. Um, we did attempt, without charge, because it's not something we do, we're, we're, we're not a public adjuster, we sat down for free, my team, uh, multiple times with the Stevens, and put together packages for them for additional coverages that we have nothing to do with. So you usually don't see this on a commercial property as loss of use, and they did not have it in their policy. But we took the time out on multiple occasions to help them draft these documents, and they did receive, um, I don't want to misspeak, to my knowledge, I believe a year's worth of rent, and then an additional six months' worth of rent. Um, it was, they stopped that, Anthony was the fellow we were working with on the, with the carrier, um, they stopped those after we stopped being involved with the project. Uh, Miss Judy was another one of the clients that backed out after the hysteria surrounding this board and Channel 3 News. Scared a lot of people, they backed out. And with a lot of the misconduct against me and ignoring documentation I provided in the past, as you know, in my absence, you made decisions about my license, and then I was unable to help. You, um, you took a $860,000 job for $265,000? I did not. I did not. That transpired, that transpired after. Those, those, were, those were funds that the insurance ended up approving. So this is very typical for insurance work. We'll go in and make assessments. They paid out initial portions um, of coverages they saw before the building was even torn apart. And then after damages were found and we had to go further and further, all the drywall was wet through a 17,000 square foot building. It needed mitigation, it needed further treatment, it needed a whole new roof, all of those things. So all the money is gone, the 265K. Absolutely. You spent all of that on the job. Absolutely. So we're, we're past that level of completion. That's, that's a little more, but roughly a you know, quarter of the funds. And 
uh, we're, we're past that level of completion. So now we're nearing a whole bit back. So actually, that was another one of my notes here, is Miss Judy alluded to uh, funds, the build back funds, that were not released yet. So that's the same funds that I'm, I'm discussing here today. Without those funds, I was not able to do the project. So the project came to a halt because we did not have the funds released from the carrier. Yeah, right now, you don't have a license. You can't do anything. So Thank why you. won't you sign that so Thank she you. can move forward? That's my only protection. That advise my attorneys. To I think everybody to else is going to do what's right. You know, you're the one that hasn't done what's right. So I don't if you mean go ahead. You, I think sir. you ought to go ahead and sign that for the lady. I appreciate your opinion, uh, but no one else has done what's right so far. So I have to use whatever measure to protect myself at this time. I think you're going to be in more trouble. This might work to uh, help you a little bit. Understood. Can I have uh, Ms. Stevens come back up? I want to remind the board we're still in discussion on the motion. The 265K, is that uh, you got more money coming? If he signs it, that AOB, they'll release more money for you. Our insurance company has the build back funds but they mm -hmm. won't release them without mr lacoste's name on them so we're just kind of in limbo we can't get it built back without would that total go up to like eight hundred and sixty thousand, like you said um so the bill back that um we we're probably i mean prices have gone up since this began so we're probably up to i think uh, contractor told me probably 650000 to build back. Um, we've gone to, we're actually in the process of appraisal with our insurance company and now an umpire. And I mean, I think they're close to a decision on the build back funds. But there again, I, they're going to have to sit there because our insurance company won't release them to, to us. Um, they won't put just our name as owners on it. Um, so, I mean, I have a copy of, from the insurance company of funds that have been released. And Mr. Lacoste was very good to us initially. We, he, they did work with our insurance company and he told us that he would not keep our rent money during this time that the insurance was paying for lost rent. Mm -hmm. But our lost rent was capped at $72,601. But we've had our building sit there for two years now. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just continuing to lose every month. I don't know. I don't know. What I, I don't know. I just want to get on with our lives. May I see a copy of that insurance paperwork? And do you have an attorney? Did I hear you mention you have an attorney? Do, okay. Um, because again, I don't know how we move forward. So our attorney is having to talk to the insurance company, and um, all of that could be solved by him signing that AOB. Yes. It loses hundreds of thousands. I mean, yes. Make sure that you mention. If if you're entitled to that, I'm sure you get it. Is that all you have right now? Okay, Mr. Lacoste. Mr. Lacoste, you stated that you expended in excess of the insurance funds for this project. I don't know exactly what that amount is because the board didn't let me continue so I could get that documentation. So I'm not going to speak on that exact amount. When I have that documentation, I'd be glad to speak on it. Where did you receive those funds from? Yeah. I'm sorry? Where did you receive the additional funds from? Where do I receive them from? Where did you? I'm assuming the carrier. The carrier paid you $265,000 for this project. You said you expended additional funds. Where did you receive those funds from? Our own funds. 
we're, in, we're vested in the project. That's what I'm referring to. I, I alluded a moment ago to Mr. Waters. We're going to lose money on this project. Please explain how you will lose. Because we've completed past what's been paid out. So if we ex our contract now and just forfeit that, then we'll lose on those profits. Please explain what additional you have completed beyond what you were paid. I want to make sure I understand what you're asking. They, they valued, a carrier has, has valued an amount of work, misvalued, undervalued, as they always do. I'm not going to stand in front of you and, and play the game and pr pretend that that doesn't happen on each and every claim, which every client in here is aware. That's why they've increased those values, but they still have not increased them. Um, so I'll explain it this way. I'll cut to the chase. Originally, they, have, they valued this project at 119000 $119,000. Now, roughly, I don't want to misspeak on the number, you said two sixty-five dollars plus an additional $650,000. So we see how off we are, right? Yeah, but I think you've missed the point. Yeah. You received $265,000. Okay. What did you spend beyond that so far? Oh, that's what I'm mentioning. I'm not, I don't have that exact figure. I, I asked you to give me and time. And how long have you been knowing you were going to be here? A uh, few days, handful a of days. A few days. Miss Reaver, so. when did you send an email notification to Mr. Lacoste? I asked Miss Reaver. Thank Understood. you. Well, I've, I've caught you in several lies last time I was here, and they were. They we were need to. Under, so. We need to be careful that when we are speaking on the record, we have a court reporter who's trying to take Understood. down everything that someone is saying, and it's important that she get that record correct to protect everyone in the room, including you. So if, whenever one person is speaking, we need to be careful that we don't speak over them. I'm telling you so she doesn't have to. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's for my own protection. I did point out uh, five different occasions last time I was in front of this board where that took place. I proved it with documentation. The conversation continued to slide and slide, and the goalposts moved on me from we didn't speak to there was a verbal conversation to there was an email to we described what was in the email, and we... we kind of conveniently forgot that we said we never spoke the first time. So I do those things so they're on record for my own protection. I hope you can appreciate that. Mr. Koss. Yes, sir. I look at you right in the eye and ask you, do you accept any responsibility for all of this stuff? For what I am resp responsible for? No, no, yes, I, I do. I'm not finished. Do you res accept responsibility? For all of these, there, we got cases we haven't even got to yet. Mm -hmm. And every time you're up here, it's everybody else's fault. I accept, I'll answer your question again, I accept responsibility for what I have control over and what I'm responsible for. When other people made decisions without my knowledge and without me having any part of it and I have no control over it, I cannot and will not accept responsibility for that and I will not be the fall man for it. I apologize if you don't like that. There's no so, apology. You're the one. <laughs> Ms. Reber, when did you notify Mr. Lacoste of this complaint? I sent Mr. Lacoste an email on Wednesday, September 7th, um, attaching three complaints. Um, Ask him to respond in the next 15 days in which Mr. Lacoste responded by email on September 22nd, 2022. Um, he did not respond to this particular case. Thank you. So Mr. Lacoste, you have say, stated that you spent in excess of what you received from the insurance funds. Give us a ballpark. Was it 20,000, 30,000? It doesn't have to be a specified amount. I'm not going to allow you to, to play with words and try to entrap me. When I have the documentation in front of me, I'd be glad to share it down to the penny. You should have it already. You were notified in September of this meeting. So, so it I was should actually, be right in front of you right now. Yes, sir. So I'll, I'll answer that. So I was actually notified about, about this hearing after the conversations back and forth. I was told it was. We said, talked about conversations. We're talking about you were notified about this meeting in September. You had the information then. 10 4. So I'm going to answer okay. your question. No. You answered the question. I have How much yet. more did you spend over the $265,000? 
You're not going to entrap me to misspeak, I'm sir. not trying to entrap you. you it's your own words. I was told about this meeting it's on your 9... your own words. On 926, and I've continued to let the board know that I don't have documentation. I, You and Channel 3 News have, have caused me to be blackballed in this community, and my former partners have actually extracted all of my information. Before me receiving anything, they have plundered and picked through my files, and I have no access to my electronic files. Mr. Colacost, I'd like to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Who on this board signed any of your cotton-picking frickin' contracts that you keep blaming us for all of your problems with? Which one of us up here signed those contracts? So before your involvement no, no, with the board. No, no, I need you to answer my question. You, you never answer a question, you go all around the world. Which one of us signed any of your contracts? That's an irrelevant question. No, it's not. It's something to add. The answer is none of us. You know that. And none of us met with your clients. You're structuring, us, you're structuring your question, Jack. So I can't answer. You have a situation where you can't look at truth and deal with it. Because not a one of us signed anything. Not a one of us told you. And you want to blame us and a TV station. For take, sharing misinformation, absolutely. You take your responsibility and get your act together with this stuff because you're hurting a bunch more people. Mr. Lacoste, can you just sign that AOB form? Please sign it. That's something that could be done in private. This is, this is honestly Listen, not that I, I know well. you, you, you had to be pretty sharp to get a GC license, okay? And you ought to have some decency still in you from what I've heard of your background in the past. I think, why don't you just sign that for the lady? So we've heard even this particular client and many others stand up here and say the relationship they had with me and how I performed on their project to this point. And that's what I was referring to, Mr. Lister, is no, uh, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't transform overnight. I didn't transform overnight. A lot of people got scared and withdrew. When 40, 60% of your clientele withdraw about for widespread misinformation all at once, it crumbles a business. It crumbles I think a they had a reason no to withdraw because you're not, according to all these complaints, Ms. Reaver has said, they didn't just stick their finger to the wind and go, uh-oh. They had legitimate reasons why. And the, everything we're seeing here today, Ms. Chair, there's, again, people didn't just make up stuff. No, no. We're, we're playing the chicken and the egg. We ain't playing, you're, no, we're you're, playing Jack. You're reversing you're the playing, timeline. You're reversing the playing. timeline. You're reversing the timeline. No, sir. When insurance doesn't perform or someone withdraws from a contract, I can no longer perform. You've heard the clients themselves repeatedly get up here and talk about my performance prior to those things. I didn't transform into a different person overnight. Can I call the questions? We've had a call for the question. I think that time we have to vote on where the questions will be called. We have a motion. We have a second. 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 A motion. Call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the question is called, which means discussion ceases. And we move to the motion, which we have, to deny the extension to the next meeting on this case. Any further discussion on that motion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to, is approved to deny your extension Understood. on this case. Move forward. That concludes staff's presentation of the case. We okay. Make a motion to move the case to disciplinary hearing uh, based on the uh, allegations presented by staff. Second. Motion made and second. Is there any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing for this case is approved. Before we continue, Mr. Lacoste, this hearing will proceed to disciplinary on November 2nd. Any documentation or evidence should be supplied before that time if you wish for it to be attached to the agenda at least seven days before that agenda would go out, which is five days before that hearing. Any evidence that you wish to provide, again, should meet that deadline. If you do not meet that deadline, you will need to provide printed copies for each board member on the day of. Thank you. Thank you. 
and uh, Madam Secretary, just to add to the record, um, the cases that will be heard on November 2nd, Mr. Lacoste was um, provided all of those cases on September 26th of 2022 via email. That doesn't include this case because he wouldn't have been aware. Correct. All right, moving on. The next one. Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, state registered license number RG29110380, contractor competency board, complaints number 2208125COM. It's in regard to Dave and Sabrina Pullman, the homeowner complainants, at 1079 Perdido Manor Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Are Mr. and Ms. Pullman present? Thank you. Are you going to provide testimony? Mr. Lacoste, you're still present. Are you going to provide testimony? Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to provide testimony for this hearing? <clears throat> All right, no response. Um, at this time, I'm going to have the Pullmans uh, sworn in. Do we need to re-swear in Mr. Lacoste, or will him being sworn in for the first hearing suffice? Mr. Lacoste, you'll also need to be re-sworn in. Mr. and Ms. Pullman, if you could state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Mr. Lacoste? Jesse Lacoste, 5974, Chi Chi Circle, Florida. Could you read directions to this one? You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, you do. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and just a reminder Ms. Reber is still sworn in. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was. It was filed on August 18th of 2022. All right. Were you able to communicate with the Pullmans about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with Mr. Lacoste about the case? Yes, I was. Did the Pullmans provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? Yes, they did, and it is attached. Did Mr. Lacoste provide any supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup to the case? Mr. Lacoste did uh, submit a response via email, and it is attached to the agenda. Were permits pulled? If so, when and what are their status? There were permits pulled, an alteration permit issued to Lacoste on April 7th of 2021. No inspections were ever done on that permit. Scambia County building official voided that permit on August 11th, 2022 due to revocation of Mr. Lacoste's license. Thank you. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 2208125COM, <coughs> be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like signed. Being none, the motion to move evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each um, violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C8. Uh, Mr. Lacoste began work on the project. Just one moment. Um, and began work to do emergency repairs, which began on December 20th of 2020. 
Mr. Lacoste received insurance payment of $20,000 on November 30th of 2020. He received additional $41,877.87. And the last time Mr. Lacoste was on the project was December of 2020. Code section 1837C11, as I testified, the uh, amount of money that Mr. Lacoste has received. And if you'll show, if you don't mind, um, the pictures of the house in its current state for those funds. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, Mr. Lacoste did not apply for the necessary permits uh, within the 30 days required. Again, he uh, did not apply for permits until Sorry. It's here. Okay. Uh, did not apply for the permits till April 7th, or issued the permits till April 7th, 2021. And if you'll remove that last code, 1837D9J does not apply. It is, but he has that okay. in the, his contract. I apologize. Thank you, Melissa. Mr. and Ms. Pullman, if you could please come up. This is your opportunity to address the board in regard to your case. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, ladies, we, we very much appreciate this venue uh, as a means to uh, instead of all these things being aggregate out in the community, uh, being gathered in one place and uh, growing in a very large volume of evidence that, uh, frankly, we hope gets picked up by the state's attorney when the time is right and uh, get it into the proper venue in the court law. So, uh, I'm, uh, <clears throat> Dave Pullman this is my wife, Sabrina Pullman. Um, there is a unique piece of our property that we, I want the board to know. There are two contracts, separate and distinct and completely independent from each other, that involve Lacoste construction. The first one is between Mr. Lacoste and a workers' comp insurance company, and I'll, I'll build that. I'll build that watch for you. The second one is between us and our private insurance, and Mr. Lacoste for Hurricane Sally, uh, wind and flood repair. How we got there was. In uh, May, of May of 2019, our daughter, uh, adult daughter, 22 years old, was catastrophically injured uh, at work uh, in an airplane crash. Every time someone goes to a hospital, it could be for a catastrophic injury or it could be uh, for an appendicitis. <laughs> the moment you walk into a hospital, the, uh, the, the discharge plan begins. Mm -hmm. So even though she, there was, she was highly likely to not even survive being in the hospital, the discharge plan was... was was developing. So where does a person go once they leave a hospital when they're catastrophically injured? Well, this 22-year-old young woman living on her own with a college degree, starting her career, was living in an apartment. Well, she can't get discharged to an apartment that the lease is long expired. <laughs> you know, well, and then in a COVID environment, she would be discharged to a nursing home or a, an assisted care facility. And, and, and in COVID, that's a death sentence for someone injured like her. So we said, we want to bring her to our home. The, ho the house that we raised our children in, we sold in 2018. You know, we're empty nesters, she's our youngest. And we purchased the house on 1079 Bernardino Manor Drive, the house in question, six months before she was injured. She never lived there. She's a college graduate, you know, she would come visit, but that was not her home and never was. It's an, it's an empty nest house, not designed to accommodate a severely injured person. So. As the discharge plan is developing, the occupational therapists come in and they do their assessments. And they're like, you can't get there from here inside these four walls. We have to do an addition. We've got to build an addition to accommodate her significant medical needs, her significant staff, 24-hour staff, medical supplies. It's, it's considerable. So they said uh, the, way, the way ahead is 
to build an addition, and again, this is between the workers' comp insurance company and ended up being Lacoste. There was a third company that they, had, that they had looked at. The first two companies, they looked at the job and either said, I'm not capable, I'm not able, and they finally came to uh, Lacoste Construction and brought them on as to do this project. Well, this project was going to happen on our property. We were not party to the contract. We did not select Lacoste Construction. You know, we were doing it because we thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, it would probably destroy the value of the property, but so what? Our daughter needed a place to go. So that's how we got in contact with Lacoste Construction. And uh, again, we are not party to that. That's, we didn't pay him, we didn't hire him, we didn't sign anything. The contract, that contract is between Lacoste Construction and our daughter's employer's workers' comp insurance company, period. We're not out, we're, we're not part of that. So I wanted to tell you that, and then fast forward to Hurricane Sally. It made all the sense in the world to us that the, co the contractor that is going to do the, the addition is the same company that's going to repair the, parent, the, the base structure that has to get prepared before the addition can go. So made all the sense in the world to hire Lacoste Construction to repair the main structure. Um, and we, uh, we approached Jesse with that, uh, with that idea, that proposal. He looked at the, the, the scope of the damage. It was wind and flood. And he says, yeah, we can do it. Here's this AOB. He urged us to sign it. And you know, concerning the AOB, it's it's not something we would typically sign. You know, I'm not into signing my rights away, but we were fully engaged in our daughter's health care in Atlanta. Um, she was still alive, and and, and still remains alive. But uh, her her survival was far from certain. We are fully engaged in Atlanta in her health care, and advocating for her care and uh, making life and death decisions. And uh, so, frankly, we didn't have the bandwidth to deal with this. It's like AOB, he's. He's been vetted by workers' comp already. He must be okay. AOB, whatever, sign it. Back to Atlanta we go. And uh, so uh, we had the flood payout, which we forwarded uh, to uh, La Costa Construction. That was our that was our our part of the AOB. We we, we sent the funds. The wind payout is uh, in litigation, still is. So uh, none, none of the wind payout funds have, uh, have. There's nothing to pay out yet. But. Uh, that's, uh, that's the story I want you to know, the unique part of what La Costa was doing for the same address, but two completely separate, distinct, independent contracts. And uh, we're available to uh, answer any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Sweetheart, you got Mr. Chair, I have a question. Thank you. I have a question. Oh, yes, sir. So, um, according to the statement here, since December 2020, the cost construction has never returned to your home to do anything at all in the work since December of 2020. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I believe that's about the time that uh, they did the the initial uh, emergency mitigation. Uh, you know, knock the sheetrock out. And uh, it took them a year. It, it was a year before it was close. Yeah, to it, a, was a, it was. It was a year was before a he removed the mold. But the sum total of what he rock. did. Uh, materially, physically, was to remove that sheetrock. And, and that was the last you, yes. nothing's been yeah, done since. Uh, we'd had several telephone conversations, and uh, yes. again, I, uh, I see a common theme here, that, uh, you know, Mr. Lacoste, he waves around big numbers, but they're none of them are in writing. We were, we were begging him for estimates, begging him for invoices, begging him for to account for funds spent. And he throws around big numbers, but there's never anything in writing. We know insurance doesn't cover the full cost. We know. <laughs> Tell me your estimates so I can get the funds to cover the difference and we can move ahead. Never got anything. What's the current status of your home? You just saw well, pictures of it, sir. It's, we've been paying on a mortgage on a house for two years that we yeah. can't live in. Yeah. Unlivable. Still. Unlivable. Yes, correct. It's mold. You, you don't have another contractor yet? We, we, we're, we're searching for we're, We think we got a good one. And we go through y'all to make sure that they're legitimate. Okay. Does Mr. Lacoste? That's a good idea. <laughs> we now learned. Does Mr. Lacoste still have an AOB on file for you? We uh, we, we canceled it uh, in writing uh, okay. when we uh, heard through our attorney that he had been uh, arrested, and uh, and then subsequent to his release, uh, we had a, a phone and email exchange. I, I forget what it was. Either I think it was on the phone. Where again, I'm urging him to give me estimates, give me invoices, account for the money. He, actually, he even said, 
uh, give me 10 days. It's going to take me time to get it together. Well, 10 days came and left, and I'm like, okay, we're done. Never, never anything in writing. Okay. So, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Lacoste, it's now your opportunity to address the board. So I wanted to cover a couple of those items and, and respond to each one individually. Um, absolutely, I did work with the Pullmans throughout that entire time period. Um, I want to be very careful about how I word this because it's an extraordinary event that they've gone through. But you do see a common theme here, how we spend about 95% of the time talking about an unrelated emotional event. And, and again, I want to look you in the eye. I don't mean to demean anything that you've been through. I care deeply about this family, and I know you've been through a lot, and I, that statement does not take away from anything that your family's gone through. I want to be very, very clear about that. Um, but that is a common theme with all of these complaints. There's not much of a material complaint of what I've actually done wrong. Um, permits and timeline. That is something covered in the initial file. Yes, permits were pulled. We could not pull them in that timeline. There is a subsection 2B and 2C that covers this um, with that statute. If I come and file for a permit and I don't have a scope I'm gonna get turned around that's been addressed in front of this board multiple times this is an insurance project it started out with the workers comp we spent multiple years consulting planning design redesign a lot of those things I'm still owed for on this project they're not the ones writing the check for it I do understand that they're not on the hook for that um, I do want to refute Dave's recommendation uh, yes, there were multiple other parties. Um, Dave personally pulled me to the side on multiple occasions, and they did recommend it. They, they were very, very clear with their workers' comp insurance that they wanted to use me. I'm the only one that they thought could handle the project. Further through the timeline, yes, Sally did come through when the house was inhabited um, and did severe damage um, to the main home, which we were going to, most of our scope was going to be an addition to the home. So quarters for their daughter to come back to and live in, which as she progressed, we were working with PTs and, and different uh, professionals in the medical industry to on their recommendations is as Jessica, their daughter continued to progress, we made changes to those designs and plans for her current condition. Um, as Sally came through, there were additions to the main, I'm sorry, conditions brought forth to the main home, which they signed an AOB. I know he mentioned he wouldn't typically, do, they, they did read, understand, and enter a contract with us on that. Now, bringing us forward to the insurance process, as I've discussed in front of this board before, uh, which they've, um, there's been past decided, uh, an attempt to remove my license, and my license was revoked, of course, for the initial um, complaint, the initial hearing, where insurance paid out a portion. You see a, another common theme, they paid out a portion, we completed a portion, and then the client wanted us to come back and I guess complete the rest of the home on our, on our own dime and hope we get paid one day. And I wish I was able to do that. I do wish I was able to do that. Um, I have a mission spirit and I, and I would love to be able to do that. And unfortunately, it's a for-profit business and I just don't have the capacity to, nor do I have the contractual duty to do that. Um, total contract versus um, what was paid out. Uh, very minuscule amount um, in comparison. Uh, I don't want to misspeak. Uh, I believe that you may have said a, uh, an amount there. Yes, sir. Um, and just to clarify, you do understand this has nothing to do with the workers' comp claim and which your statement speaks to. This is separate insurance. Yes. So you were paid uh, $61,877.87. And Understood. as they stated, they're sitting with a gutted. And, and that is towards roughly, and I do want to make clear roughly, because again, I don't have that documentation in front of me, 342 to $346,000 project. That is something like most of these other contracts where they were in a, a limbo situation, not due to my own doing or the cost construction group's doing, but their own carrier. They did not have it approved. At one time, their carrier came very, very close to doing a, um, a total loss. On this same home so while it may look like we've only hit various areas around the home that's because that was what was approved and we went in and did that scope once that was founded 
we permitted that work, we went in, we performed that work, and they continue to currently sue their insurance carrier. Again, common theme, much like a lot of the other complainants, they're suing their carrier. Nothing I can do in the meantime that creates a, a downtime. My hands are tied. Mr. Because I have a question. Go ahead. The pictures we've seen up here of the demolition. The demol uh, demolition and mitigation. So there were treatments as well, which is the most costly portion. And you received 61000 and you're telling us today that you've already spent all of this money and more? Have you seen DKIs and ProClean and Surpro's prices for Mr. Claus, you know very well I'm in this business just like you. And, and that's why I asked you that specifically. Yes, sir. And I'm asking you, you're telling us you've already spent more than 61000 and you can document that. I don't You're know what gap oath. there. I'm not going to speak oath. on that. I, I don't know what gap there. Okay. I know we re I know we had a portion approved that we received, and we did go in and complete that work. I don't I don't want to misspeak there. I don't have that information. Second point is this: yes, Are sir? you aware that you can pull a permit, and then you can add to the scope as it expands? That's been done for. I've been this is 38 years. I know it's been done for 38 years. You get a permit on a remodeled job, knowing what you know. Yes, and you're sir. able to go add to that. Were you not aware of that? I was, and I'm glad that you made that point. I'm, I'm, I'm so actually, I'm not finished. So yes, you sir? said a while ago you couldn't get a permit because you didn't know the scope, but you can get a permit for what you know. And that's my point. That's what I wanted to respond. That is prior to us knowing what was going to be approved at all. So once we did find out that something was going to be approved, that is when we moved forward and we okay. obtained a permit. So, and my third final thing is this. December, Did you not want me to finish it? Pardon? Did you not want me to respond to that? I, it, honestly, you're you're not you're not responding. You're just I responded. December 2020 is the last time you was on that job. Is that correct? Based on what Miss Reber and what the owners have said here, Pullman's. That's what they described today. I'm asking you, based on everybody else's, you were last there December 2020. Is that correct? That's not the last time I was there at all. No. When that scope was performed. That is what they've stated today. I don't have those project manager records. The Pullman in front of me state today. that since December 2020, Lacoste has never returned to complete any more work on their home. That is absolutely incorrect. It's amazing everybody's incorrect. And this is very important for you to note, for you to note, December 2020 is before anything came before this board, before WEARTV that you're blaming everything on. That's my point to you all ago, Mr. Lacoste, is that these things did start way before this. These people have a right to be upset today. And you really need to take a deep look at this, bro. Really, a uh, deep look at this. As you can imagine, I have. And I can't I, imagine. I, I, want, I, want to, I want to respond to that. So I did directly respond to you. You, you asked about my knowledge of, of the ability to pull a permit with limited knowledge on the scope. There was no scope approved at that time. So that refutes what you're saying. When I did it have limited refute. knowledge on the scope, so I, I'm answering you directly. You may not like my answer, but I'm answering you directly. When I did have knowledge of partial scope, I pulled a permit. I performed that scope. Now, you, you actually made another good point, which, which I've jotted down here as Dave Pullman was speaking. Um, yes, the project started before then. As you can see, there was never a complaint. There was never an issue. You just kind of completed my own argument there. There, there, was, there was never an issue there. We consulted for multiple years. We did perform work as it was paid for. And now, years later, there's a complaint made as things are brought to the media. It has nothing to do all at the same time. December 2020. When was the permit pulled on this project? Mr. Go ahead. Um, permit was issued on April 7th of 2021. That's a heck of a long time below Thank before you. December. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so, so Dave Pullman actually stood in front of you just moments ago, and he actually admitted that a s subsequent to these current events, that caused him to pull out. Not anything that happened in that meantime. And that's what I was trying to explain, Mr. Lister. It, 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 we have a big problem. The problem is you can't understand that you've made a big mess. But the lesser problem is this. 
you can't you can't go from December to this time for not getting a permit. You, I mean, anybody knows that. I mean, Ex so ex expound on that. Everybody knows this except Jesse. Do you do you mind expounding? No, on that? I'm, I'm done talking. I, I kind of figured. So. so in the meantime, during that stretch, I actually they were so happy with me that I actually bid multiple more projects for them. So they did make a statement that they never received any, any numbers and they actually mentioned a 10 day window at the very end there. So what I was actually alluding to was pulling those figures. As I mentioned to you, I, I got home, I hit the ground running. I don't have any of that data, literally zilch. When I log into my old email, we used to have our own server. When I log into that, contacts come up, none of that data comes up at all. All my employees' emails who actually handle this directly, none of that data comes up. So I gave them the same figure I gave you today, and I told them that's actually already been provided. Now, they did receive multiple, as, as they mentioned themselves, estimates for the workers' comp, which has really nothing to do with them, um, for the uh, Hurricane Sally work, and for multiple other projects they wanted me to perform in their home and on the adjacent building that they mentioned. Now, um, in the meantime, uh, towards the end of this, I mentioned a 10-day window that Mr. Dave alluded to. That was actually to obtain that information from their own attorney, who is still currently suing their insurance care. All of that was turned into him. So they mentioned never getting anything in writing. Well, they had an attorney that was handling that, so all of that was given to that attorney. That was their LOR that was in place. So he did have that. When the attorney, their own attorney, didn't give me that information, I was not able to give it to them, and I reminded him of what that amount was. Hey, I know it's in between, you know, I'm kind of giving you a 1% factor there. It's in between this number and that number, the same numbers I shared with you today. Um, again, with a lot of the uh, things surrounding my company, my name, uh, once this, this board and the media tied me into Matthew Banks and Banks Construction, well, you're shaking your head no, but the client just stood in front of you and admitted the same thing. Subsequent to those things currently is why they decided to pull out. Not anything that I misperformed up until that point. You can may not like can it, you tell us in a brief statement why this project has gone bad with your name on it? Why has it gone bad? Why has it gone bad? Right. Well, that's what I'm explaining. It wasn't tell, up until that In a that brief point. statement, tell us why. The insurance carrier has still not paid out or it's the insurance. Final you know, you keep getting tied up in all these insurance cases. I'll never do insurance work again, Mr. Waters. No. I'll never touch it again. All right. Multiple site business plannings. Multiple big projects. You receive your numbers, estimates as a whole. So Any further problem. questions? Mr. Lacoste, you stated that you went back and performed additional work after December 2020. Can you give us some more details on that? So some of that was softworks. As I mentioned, they were planning many other projects with me. They've come in town. From Explain Atlanta. what softwork is. Uh, preliminary planning design so still performing scope um, a, lo a lot of it that I'm still unpaid for now I want to be clear I, I don't point a finger at the Pullman for that a lot of those things are um, well there's a combination between their own personal projects the workers comp and Hurricane Sally planning so and, and a lot of that was approved by workers comp they they just haven't paid it for any of that do you have the documentation to support that I will. That's some of the same documents that I'm alluding to earlier. I do have one question because I'm confused. So the yes, Pullman said that they did not receive a scope of work from you, and you're saying you provided a scope of work. Which yes. one is it? Yes. There was a scope of work provided. Um, their attorney, Mordecai Breyer, still has that, and the, and the final pricing. Uh, that was actually the same scope that was going to be approved. I, I mentioned earlier... Um, that the insurance carrier was going to write this off as a total loss. After they, there was a, some insurance laws that changed in the meantime, and a lot of these went towards appraisal. So there, was, there were large settlements, some of these insurance companies. Question for you. You said a scope of work was provided. Correct. Why don't we have it? Why doesn't the board have it? Well, if, if they didn't provide it, then you I'm, can provide it also. You're a respondent. <laughs> you can provide that information. I, I covered that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, Chairman. I covered that when I first walked up here. That's all the same information that I'm trying to get a hold of now. 
all of my servers, everything that was on my cloud of my servers is what I did not have access to. Hey, Mr. Lacoste, you know you're in a lot of trouble. Does that bother you? This entire situation bothers me. Are you trying to do anything to correct a lot of this stuff? Absolutely. I mean, just as a decent human being, Absolutely. the right thing to do. Yes, sir. Even in, in any, any client who has stuck with me through this, as the Polans mentioned, they actually did at first until they asked for the 10-day window. I've continued to perform for those clients. Matter of fact, uh, Judy Stevens mentioned her commercial complex. Multiple of her tenants in there. And it has nothing that, to do with this. I'm, I'm answering that has nothing question. to do with this. They, they have stuck with me. Their projects are either completed or being completed. How are you working without a license? Well, I have about five other licenses. Mr. Lacoste, are any of those licenses registered in Scambia County? I did not state that those projects were in Escambia County. <laughs> we're talking about projects in Escambia County. You sound like a slickster. I wouldn't have. Well, that's a slick <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that you have that opinion. That's, that's not me at all. Well, you're that's showing opinion. that. That's true. Because I've continued to work with the clients who stuck with me and take care of them. Well, the other clients, I don't have an not opportunity to. But you're not taking care of them. Mr. Matthews, I don't have the opportunity to, and it's your own decision. You took my license in Escambia County. I didn't do and anything. I don't you ignored three inches worth of information, a stack of information, and you made a call. An individual came in front of this board and asked for restitution. There was no appraisal done. There was no estimate on that work. She literally asked for it, and you gave it to her. I did more work than what I was paid for. That has nothing, in my to, absence, that you, has nothing to do with what you are today. To do with it. It has everything to do with it. No, it you don't. took my license. I'm being called a slickster no. because my hands are tied. I want to help these people. Have I want to complete ever, these jobs. You have me mispainted. And I don't take it no. personal. I don't take it personal. I'm not angry with your you. Your actions show that. The I, building official took your license. That's who takes the license. You did what it took to get them That's taken right. from you. That's not true. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's not true. All right. All right. Somebody needs to look Let's something move on. dictionary word in so that, Melissa, you got something? I do. Um, Mr. Lacoste mentioned something earlier in part of the mitigation on the home. Yes. Um, do you recall, do you use any other vendors or do you usually use Outback? Uh, come back. Come back restoration. To mine. Yeah, we use other vendors. Okay, because um, it, it can be added to this agenda. Uh, come back, appear before this board letting with evidence showing that you did not pay them for part of the services on that. Is there, you know, does that not figure into the $60,000 that you received? That agreement was actually, Mr. Lister brought that up at a previous hearing, mm -hmm. and I had mentioned where all of those um, um, were dropped, actually. They, they it, well, I, they, the claim of lien were dropped, yes. but Mr. Never Dillinger won. has never received his money. Is that correct? Well, that's because he, he put a project total on each of them, even projects he didn't perform, and he just went out, and anyone we had a permit pulled on, he just filed a claim of lien on all of them. To Mr. Make Chairman, and this isn't relevant to this particular I understand. case. I didn't bring it up. Uh, well, I part. just wanted to add part of Mr. Dillinger's evidence was direction from Lacoste Construction yeah. to go out and evaluate or whatever with these jobs, so. Yeah, and I just didn't want that to muddy the waters with any included misinformation. That's why I res responded to that. So all of that was removed. Mr. Chairman, that Please. concludes our presentation of this case. It seems like you are ready to proceed. I make a motion we move to disciplinary hearing based on the allegations presented except for the Last item. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any mm -hmm. further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move to prop, uh, disciplinary hearing for this case is approved. Mr. Lacoste, my statement earlier about evidence and documentation stands for this hearing as well. Thank November you. 2nd.
Our next item is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, State Registered License Number RG29110380, Contractor Competency Board, Complaint Number 2208125COM. It's in regard to Howard Hester, the homeowner complainant at 3896 Potosi Road, Pensacola, Florida. This is within the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Potosi, are you present? I mean, no, Mr. Hester on Potosi Road, are you present? Yes. Thank you, sir. I apologize for that. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Lacoste, I see you're still present, and are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience that's going to provide testimony for this hearing today? No response. Um, Mr. Hester, if you could please come state your name and address for the board and be sworn in. And Mr. Lacoste, if you could also be sworn in again. Thank you. Howard Hester, 3896 Potosi Road, Pensacola. Thank you. And Mr. Lacoste? Jesse Lacoste, 5974 Chi Chi Circle, Gulf of Florida. Thank you. Please raise your right hands. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And as a reminder, Ms. Reber was already sworn in. Um, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed, Ms. Reber? Yes, it was on August 31st, 2022. Thank you. And were you able to communicate with Mr. Hester about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with Mr. Lacoste? Yes, Mr. Lacoste. About the case? Yes, he submitted a response via email. Thank you. Did Mr. Hester provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda? Yes, he did and it is attached. <clears throat> Did Mr. Lacoste provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda? Nothing other than his statement. Were permits pulled, and if so, when and what are their status? Um, there were no permits pulled by Lacoste Construction. Thank you. At this time, staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County bid staff concerning contractor Compsy board complaints and investigations regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 2208125COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Right. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move the evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to this case? If so, please state each violation in your justification. Code section 1837C6. Mr. Lacoste received a total of 50000 $364.50, which he provided Mr. Hester a receipt for. Um, however, it was determined that even though Mr. Lacoste arranged for quality roofing to put a roof on Mr. Hester's home, quality was never paid. Therefore, uh, Mr. Hester ended up having to pay quality on May 31st, 2022, $37,012.27. Code section 1837C11, again, Mr. Lacoste uh, provided a receipt uh, for receiving payments for the roof and he never paid quality roofing. And I think Mr. Hester will testify to uh, the additional monies that were paid were for some other work performed and very, very minimal was performed. Mr. Hester, it's your opportunity to address the board in regard to the case. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, we were all hit. Quite a bit of us were hit in this county by Hurricane Sally. And when that occurred, uh, a friend in the in the neighborhood recommended a uh, noble public adjusters. And uh, three of us in the neighborhood went with uh, public, and of course they recommended Lacoste Construction. Um, we met several times, uh, and uh, there was again uh, problems with the insurance companies, as there always is. Um, insurance company recommended about twelve thousand dollars worth of work, and according to the engineering report that I provided, it was like one hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars <coughs> worth of work. I think. I think that was what it was. I believe I was in the ballpark. May have been more than that. But anyway. Uh, the uh, Mr. Cost did come out and put some blue roof areas on my house. Not the entire thing, but just where we were getting some uh, moisture coming in on the uh, to the sheetrock on the inside. So he did provide that. But um, I had to go out and find the roofing company. Uh, I, I kept calling up and uh, wanting the roof and uh, we can't find anybody or da 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 because I've got it's my roof is part of it is flat and they that comes under the heading of a commercial. Uh, pe matter of fact, the people I got to do it actually provided the uh, roof for the new uh, federal courthouse downtown. So anyway, um, got them to uh, do the roof, but I ran it through Lacoste because I had signed that document. And I started getting notifications from uh, Quality Roofing that they had not been paid. Well, not wanting a lien on my property, I went over there and uh, I wrote them a check for $37,000 plus. But uh, anyway, that was supposed to be uh, not only the roof, they were supposed to be some uh, uh, eave work done and so forth. None of that transpired. Uh, but anyway, he got a total of a little over 50000 from me, and uh, and then I had to go pay for the roof, so we're about 87000 in, in the red now. But um, we found, uh, we finally got all our work done. Matter of fact, about a week ago, we got our final home inspection. Everything has been repaired, but needless to say, Lacoste did not do it. How much work did he do for the fifty thousand? He put up he put up the blue stuff in a couple of areas of the uh, on the roof. There's a there's eaves and then there's the flat roof. Well, mm -hmm. the, he put up some uh, of that tarp on the a uh, couple sections. But you know, being generous, I would think three thousand dollars will cover that. So okay. anyway. Uh, but I have, luckily, I have a relative that works in the uh, states uh, for the state of Florida's uh, attorney general, and um, that's kind of what they do with deal with the consumer affairs. So they're aware, and uh, I, as you know, it's not the first one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hester. Any other questions? Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Lacoste, your opportunity to address the board. So I do want to um, cover the response that I gave to Melissa when I was uh, made aware of this. Um, I'm not sure that I understand the complaint. It appears that Mr. Hedger's project was completed sufficiently and successfully with proper permitting necessary inspections. I'm unaware of Mr. Hedger's material complaint because of this. It does not appear that he has an issue with performance or work completed, but rather there is an alleged and unrelated dispute with a potential civil matter between builder and quality roofing. As the board is aware, I've inherited a company in a much different economic state than I left it in. We cannot simply allow misplaced influence of third parties to cause a mass cancellation of clientele, which I've alluded to earlier, at their own emotion-driven decisions and in turn blame the builder which has made successful performance on the relevant project in question. 
This is to be treated as a civil matter that is alleged by the parties involved. I have yet another, I have yet to be approached by Quality Roofing on this matter, and that still holds true to this date. Mr. Hester did receive many additional services toward his project with the balance um, still doing some other portions that is separate from the 50 um, with no complaint of work performed. Since Mr. Hester's project remains unaffected, I'm unable to determine the course, the cause for the complaint after the guidance of the county officials with the enticement of complaining granting access to the CLB fund. And when I, when I, what I'm alluding there to is Melissa contacting um, all clients, even clients I've already completed the work, had COs on, and enticing them to come put in complaints due to the surrounding circumstances with the enticement of receiving funds from the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Um, any civil matter should be treated as such and not manipulated by the further misconduct being misplaced and heard by a board that does not hold the competency to do so and ultimately played a large role in the dispute and its onslaught. Um, what I mean by that is we keep discussing civil matters here. Now, I understand that when I share a lot of the things, though they are completely factual, it rubs people the wrong way. People don't like to hear it. Um, Mr. Waters obviously gave you the wrong opinion about me. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll finish that. I'll, I'll, I'll expound on that. Even though I state something factually before you, anytime I allude to the, to the, the concept of I didn't have control over that, people see that as blame shifting and they get angry about it. It, it does not take away from the truth and it does not take away from that fact. It, it, it's, it still holds true. Um, yes, I was absent. I did have other matters. So one thing that's actually misstated up here is uh, this DBA. Yes, <laughs> I am Jesse Lacoste, which controls a portion of Lacoste Construction Group. That's not a DBA. I'm not a sole proprietor. I own a company that owned a portion of the cost construction group. There were other officials in place that controlled funds. Let's get them to Let's get them in here. I'm the, I've been the only one standing Mr. in front of you. Let's Mr. look at, hold, hold on. What did you do with that 50000 That's That's what oh, I described no, in my you response You ain't told here. us nothing. He said you put some tarps on the roof. About $3,000. What did you do with the 50000 That I'm completely unaware of. You Which didn't get fifty thousand. Oh, I I want to be clear. That's why I explained what I just did. You I didn't get it. That what, is that what you're saying? Jesse Lacoste has never received fifty thousand. Did your company get that? I, I I'm not going to deter what he said. I, I believe if he said he so, did what did said, you do with the fifty thousand? That in my absence, if a bill was not paid paid to a subcontractor, I'm unaware of it. That subcontractor has not reached out to me and on the onslaught. Will Where, where is the sheriff? Thank you. Mr. Klaus, I have a question. Ridiculous. The project was performed, is, Mr. Waters. This is, let me, let me just remind circus. everyone please, please. one more time. We've got to be careful to not talk over each other and to um, give the court reporter an opportunity to take down what's being said. My apologies. And, and I apologize for interrupting you like that, but we also have to be careful about our own decorum in this room. Um, I know that this is a situation that we've been dealing with in front of this board for a while, and it's upsetting, and we need to remember that. Uh, we need to be respectful to everyone that's in the room. Mr. Chair, I have a question for Mr. Lacoste. Go ahead. Straight facts. According to this paper I printed out from the investigative report, Mr. Hester contracted with Lacoste in January of 2022 for roof replacement, siding, and windows. Is that a fact? And it says the cost of the work was fifty thousand three sixty four fifty. Is that a fact? I, I don't have it in front of me, but I assume so. Okay. I, I don't disagree. And that's why I was explaining to you, Mr. Waters. So I don't if, disagree. I if just, that's I that's a fact, your response is, I'm sure that I understand the complaint. It appears that Mr. Hester's project was completed sufficiently and successfully with proper permitting and necessary inspections. You can't have both being truth, Mr. Lacoste. Exactly. You just got through saying all you're doing is giving us truth, but you're saying here that it was finished, but you never done anything to siding, 
nor windows, how can you lie whenever the truth is right here in front of you? Nor were those areas paid for or covered by insurance. Mr. Hester stood in front of you and explained this. So what you're doing is you're kind of, I don't think it's intentional or malicious, but you're mixing facts there. No, no. That was for the roof. That, that contract, so that contract is for the roof. That amount, that was performed. What was paid for was performed. In my absence, if there was a, a subcontractor not paid, I'm not aware of it. And it's something I'm in, I've inherited. So I think a lot of things are just, you, you're kind of blending situations there. No, the, the problem is you're the owner of the company and you have to accept responsibility for that, Jesse. Absolutely. One, one owner of a, of a portion. And the only one here that is trying to accept responsibility. I know that you have a different opinion of me, but I am trying. With everything that I have, I am trying. I'm here for a reason. Yeah. Um, and all I can speak on is what I know. As I mentioned. Well, I think the situation, Mr. Chairman, is this. Whoever was partners or whatever he's alluding to and naming, we're not the ones that hold the license for this company. We're not, we're not a civil thing looking to the, no, no. we're looking at the licensee. And that's the reason why we're trying to get answers from him because we, it doesn't matter what other guys did, he holds the license. And okay. according to the law, if you hold the license, you are responsible for the financial. Uh, that's chapter forty nine. Okay. Unless there's someone in place for that. Unless there's someone in place for that. No, there's, place for that. no, there's no exception to the Florida law. It, well, that is part of Florida law, but I, I do understand what you're saying. Um, I want to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Lacoste received a contract for fifty thousand three hundred sixty-four dollars and fifty cents. Right. In addition to the AOB, that is correct. I, I, you're throwing stuff in there that I'm not asking you about. He, conf did he you convoluted receive, the two. Did you receive $50,364.50 for their contract? For the roofing contract? I do believe. I don't have that information. I do That's believe. That's all you got to say. Mr. Hester wrote you a check for $32,164.50 to pay for the roof. What was the $50,000 for? Can you restate that, please? <laughs> Mr. Hester wrote you a check. Would you put that back up, Jennifer? Yes, sir. Mr. Hester wrote you a check for $32,164.50 to pay for the roof. What was the $50,000 you received for? I, again, I don't have that documentation, but I do believe well, well, you don't know I'm, much I'm about your company, yeah, do you? I, I do. So I'm, I'm very clear because he just put two different situations together a moment ago. So I try to be clear in my response. I believe this is a deposit towards the roof and that what you're describing is the same funds. That's what I'm trying to explain. I don't have a, a long enough time to actually respond and give you a real answer every time because you cut me off. I believe that's the same funds you're alluding to. So when I left things unsaid, they okay, get mixed together. Okay, Mr. Chair, there's a receipt in front of you right here for the yeah, I know, 50, I'm looking 000. at it. Is that incorrect or is there something I'm not aware of, Mr. Hester? Is, is that incorrect or is there something I'm not aware of? Is the 32 towards the 50 and that's a final bill? I'm still at waiting. That that statement there was April. He can't tell the truth. The fifty thousand the, the receipt you had there was in April, April the nineteenth, right? I don't see any the point check that for thirty two thousand. I, I can't state what I don't have documentation. It's in front right of me there to on say. the screen for you. It's on the cost. screen. There's a check that says roof. There's a check that says roof. I don't know if that's a deposit towards the roof. I don't know if that's final completion. It doesn't match what the contract was, so I, I'm not going to misspeak. Just okay. I'll have to play, Hank. Leave it right there. 
March, getting, Mr. The, 15, Waters, I, I, March the 15th, you received a check for $32,164.50 for the roof. The April receipt shows you received $50,000. Was the thirty-two thousand included in the fifty thousand dollars? Yes. Okay. So that's it. So, so what I say that is correct, but I can't tell the truth. I'm assuming because so, I don't know. It, it, I, I don't point that out to be malicious, Mr. Waters. I'm trying to okay. I'm trying to prove a point here. Things are assumed about me because I'm already pointed a certain light. So when no, I say no, something, I don't assume, know. You could it answer, is. You it is. Couldn't answer the simple question. Because because I don't know. I wasn't aware of that fact, so I'm not going to speak on it. And it ended up being correct. I make an assumption. But when I do that because I don't want to misspeak, it's assumed that I'm being dishonest. That's happened over and over and over. And you've just seen the proof of it. Mr. Lacoste, just looking at the document that's on the screen right there, so you can see it, this is a receipt in the amount of $50,364.50. Is that your signature at the bottom of that receipt? Electronic, yes. Okay. So that is a receipt that you issued for monies paid for, as it states, a roof installed at 3896 Potosi. Correct. I do believe that's okay. from us. Does that clarify things? That, that clarifies it. Thank now you. then, Quality Roofing has said they haven't been paid. You're responsible for paying them. Absolutely. Why haven't you paid them? <clears throat> Well, I just found out about this when I got Whoa, this report. Oh boy, that's wrong. You knew that's, about it's it when not you said yes, you did. This. So you're so you're doing the same thing that Mr. Waters just did and making an assumption, and then ten seconds later, it ended up not being true. So let me let me keep, interrupt you again. Once again, we need to recognize decorum in this room, and we need to be able to give the court reporter the opportunity to co to take down what's being said. Yes, ma'am. So be careful about talking too fast, or talking over each other. And we don't need to be raising our voices. This can be settled in a, in a, in a calm voice, okay? Yes, ma'am. My Thank issue you. is... No, your the issue same, is the same emotion you don't know when your board. bills are due Ms. and when you fail. Mr. Chairman? This was during my absence, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lacoste, give me a moment, please. Chair, I would like to direct your attention to a statement that is part of the agenda backup from Quality Roofing Solutions. Um, I don't know if you would like for me to read it into the record but it is there, okay, to whom this may concern, and this was received to us, yeah. Mr. Hesser called Quality Roofing in November of 2021, looking to get a roof replacement quote. In December of 2021, Mr. Hester took the, his quote from Quality Roofing to Lacoste Construction to confirm approval. Once approved, Quality Roofing moved forward with the process. The roof replacement was completed in March of 2022. In April of 2022, we started sending past due balance reminders to Lacoste in regards to payment for the services that were provided. In May of 2022, Mr. Hester called to verify if we had received payment from Lacoste, and at that time, I advised him that we had not. On May 31st, 2022, Mr. Hester provided Quality Roofing with a receipt of where he paid Lacoste for his roof and that we were supposed to have received the funds from Lacoste. Mr. Hester and I could not get a hold of Lacoste at all. On May 31st, 2022, Mr. Hester also paid the whole roofing balance in the amount of $37,012.27 with check number 200. If there are any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact Anna at Quality Roofing Solutions, LLC at 850-777-0961. Thank you, Anna Stevens Quality Roofing. My statement goes, you received a check, checks, whatever, for $50,000. Before that, he had to go out and write them a check much later to cover the roof. You'd already received the money for that. What'd you do with it? Again, you're not gonna like my answer, but that was in my absence. He made that payment in my absence after the work was performed and completed. I don't mean to in point effect, a finger. That's, that's, in effect, that's Lacoste true. paid. And then, I, and then I found out about that through Melissa Reber is when I learned about that. Have you refunded the money? No. You, 
you've decimated my business. Uh, you still owe him the money. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if, if a payment, well, not, not, not this gentleman. Um, if, well, unless you made a double payment. Correct. Then absolutely the company owes, owes him what he's come out of pocket for. Absolutely. That's not something I'm negating. That's not something I'm trying to squirm or snake or, or dance around. I want to make, uh, make one thing clear. Has quality been paid? Yes. That's what I want to make sure. Okay. I'll make a motion we move this to disciplinary hearing based on the uh, allegations presented by staff. Second. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing is approved. We'll go to item 11. Mr. Lacoste, again, any documentation or evidence that you would need to provide would need to be done prior to that deadline I gave you earlier for the November 2nd hearing. If I am provided um, that documentation and I'm going to receive it, um, whatever date I'm provided, I will provide the county of what that is, of what that date Thank is. Thank you. Item 11, Jesse, Mr. Lacoste, you can have a seat. Thank you. Uh, Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG29110980. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208125COM. It's in regard to Carrie and Jackie Brown, homeowner complainant at 11122 Seaglade Drive, Pensacola, Florida 32507. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. and Ms. Brown, are you present? Oh, thank you. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Lacoste, are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? I will respond. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to provide testimony for this hearing? All right. Mr. and Ms. Brown? If you could please come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and then I'll have you and Mr. Lacoste sworn in. Um, Carrie Brown, 11119 Seaglade Drive, Pensacola, 32507. Jackie Brown, uh, 1119 Seaglade Drive, Pensacola, 32507. Yes. The project address is a different. From your physical our, home address. Home address, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you could go ahead and be sworn in, Mr. Lacoste, if you could also be sworn in. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. All right. And I'm just a reminder, Ms. Reber is still sworn in from earlier. Ms. Reber, was the formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was August 21st, 2022. And were you able to communicate with the Browns about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with Mr. Lacoste about the case? Yes, I was. Did the Browns provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup for the case? They did, and yes, it's attached. Did Mr. Lacoste provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, he uh, provided a statement via email, and it's part of the report. Thank you. So staff requests that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scambia County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste case number 2208 125 COM be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Question that's the same case number as the previous. I think there's an error. I can tell you. We can correct that. Let me pull up the investigative report. <clears throat> that they're all the same. Okay. Don't, Don't second. Yeah, so the actual accurate case number for this case is 2208-146-COM. It looks like it was 
on the agenda, just okay. copy paste, well, okay. and we'll correct okay. them as we go along. Thank okay. you. Now then, you can remake remake the, the motion. What the new case number? Here's the, the new, new case, case number. number two two zero eight one four six zero M. It's right there in front of you. There you go, Mr. Bachelor. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Skinner County bid staff concerning contractor company board complaints and investigation regarding contractor Jesse W. Lacoste, case number 2208146COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for probable cause. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to enter into evidence is approved. I just want to take a moment to clarify real quick. So, so that we get all of these corrected because the agenda reads incorrectly. The previous case involving Mr. Hester was actually 2209160COM. The case before that involving the Pullmans was 2208. That can't be. 146. You can't have two case numbers the same. That's correct. Do you have that? Let me just pull that. Hang on just a moment for the Pullmans. It looks like we just had some ty a typo on some of the reports. That and the actual correct. 125 is the Stevens case, so that one's correct. That's correct. Mm hmm The Pullman's is incorrect, and the... Uh, and then we've corrected the Brown's case at, with the 2208146. Mr. Chairman, while this is being clarified on, uh, on these numbers, so you could... Um, what I would recommend is if you want to do a motion that just says that as the record, the corrected uh, numbers are read into, that you would renew your motion on those previous cases with the correct numbers. Um, it's not, um, and then you can do a second and vote on that. If okay. The motion to introduce the evidence and um, you and the findings of cause, of probable cause, those can just be redone and, and entered into the evidence with the, I mean, into the record with the corrected numbers. It doesn't change the evidence you heard, it just changes the case numbers. It so you changes just wanna, the case number. You just uh, want to get the case numbers aligned. How about aligned. a motion to uh, correct case, the, the Pullman case and the Hester case and the Brown case to correct the case numbers? So moved. You don't need a motion to correct the case numbers. We can correct the case numbers. What I would do is make sure that your the board is in the same position um, that those the first motion the f motions that were made by Mr. Bachelor would introduce the evidence that they have the correct case numbers for those motions. Um, the, does, so, for instance, on. It would be to correct the record is what you're asking. Yes, you're well, not yes. changing, Mr. Bachelor. you're not changing what your motion was. You just need to correct the record as to the numbers. And so if you would just make a motion. So I'll I thought I did that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I named, I named the case. I've got the name. The right, it's, it's Mr. Bachelor's motion, so he needs to correct it. I'll, I'll make a motion that we change the case numbers on the Pullman case. The um, Hester. Hester case and, and the, Brown. the Brown case. So, just to clarify, on the Pullman case, it is 2208146COM. On the Hester case, it is 2209160COM. And on the Brown case, it is 2208149COM. So, your Second. motion would be to correct your previous motions? With those case numbers, you don't have to restate the whole motion. You could just do a general as stated on the record and then ask for a second for those admission of those items under those case numbers. Okay. I, I made, I'll, I'll make that motion. So. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion is approved to correct the case numbers in the evidence. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Lister. 
and Miss Joanne for bringing that to our attention. Now then. All right. All right. Sorry. We apologize. We apologize. With there being so many cases, right. the volume. Yeah. Thank you, though. Um, Miss Reaver, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? And if so, please state each violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Code section 1837C6. The Brown State, um, this was a new home build, and uh, they had a construction loan. Mr. Lacoste received the initial draw of 1000 I'm sorry, $105,000. Um, the Brown State, and the backup is in there, there were several subcontractors that have not been paid. Code section 1837C8, the Brown state that the last time any work was performed on their project was in May of 2022. There was an electrician on site. Code section 1837C11, Again, the Browns have submitted documentation um, concerning many subcontractors that were not paid. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. Mr. Lacoste received the construction loan draw Excuse me just a moment. Can you read it? Okay. The first draw was received on September twenty eighth of 2020 and permits were not applied for or issued until June 10th of 2021. No inspections have been performed um, on, there was two permits for new construction and a roof. There was no inspections performed on any of those permits and the Browns terminated both permits on May 27th, 2022. Thank you, Melissa. Mr. Ms. Brown, now's your opportunity to address the board in regard to the case. Thank you. Good afternoon already. <laughs> um, so in September, middle of 2020, we decided we wanted to build a forever home <clears throat> um, I've never done, built anything, been in any kind of involved in construction. I've lived on sailboats a lot, most of my life. So we had a friend <clears throat> who had a custom home built, and Flynn Builders did it for us. So we went to Flynn to ask them if they could do the project, and they referred us to Lacoste Construction. So then we signed the contract in September. 2020, um, the price was uh, 245000 for the to have a new home and move in. <clears throat> and like Moni said, there's, after everything happened here at, at the beginning of this year, um, we just, uh, the bank told us to terminate the contract with them. They weren't going to give them any more draws. This is uh, around May of this year. Um, we need to find a new contractor to continue on, the, so they can continue paying the, for the project. <clears throat> um, so now we're looking, I'm having to get contractor bids for the cost of completion. And I have a couple of, of bids that I gotta give to the bank and uh, 
haven't well I also have an attorney working on this since with me since he wrote he wrote up that termination contract <clears throat> but um so over two years later since we signed the contract the house is just half built it's sitting there like I said she said it was the uh, last person there was back in May of this year yeah, it was nothing moves and uh you know the there's no windows there's the roof on and peeling stick but no roofing material although just last week um we had some windows i paid for some windows to be put in high impact windows just to keep out the elements so they're just sitting wide open but the new co the new bids to the completion cost to completion are round I'm still waiting on one more, but they're around two hundred and eighty thousand, two ninety, two seventy, in that range, to complete the project, and that's after I've already, you know, I owe the bank one hundred nine thousand. So <clears throat> that's almost one hundred forty, one hundred fifty thousand more than the two hundred forty-five thousand that we signed the contract for to to have a whole house. So now we're having to come up with. We're going to have to refinance, uh, so it's going to have to refinance, like I said, about 140, 150,000 more than the original cost to build the house with the cost. Um, it's just been a lot of mental anguish. In addition to all the mental anguish, I've had, you know, I've accumulated mortgage, uh, had to pay for mortgage, mortgage, mortgage. mortgage extensions because it was over a year. And it was the house was supposed to have been completed in a year, so I've had to pay two five hundred dollar mortgage extensions. Of course, there's attorney fees. Um, the permits I've transferred all to my name, building permits, and uh, the commencement paper I went down. So all the permits are in my name, but that's because I thought I would be able to be an owner builder. But the bank insisted I have to find another contractor because they can't give the draws to me. <clears throat> so we're having to refinance. In, uh, of course, we already financed, got the mortgage for the 245000 And oh, also in that, I paid 35000 earnest money in the beginning. So now we're probably going to have to refinance for probably close to 400000 um, cause, because of the new bids, the cost of completion are so much more than what the house was originally <coughs> contracted for. And of course, um, <clears throat> and, and then the 109000 that was already paid out by the bank to get the house to where it's at right now. And um, <coughs> so I hope I... That's what position we're in, and I'm hoping uh, it can be refinanced. The bank has told me that to finance that amount I'll need, um, the house has to be appraised at around 380000 390000 to to provide the mortgage. So it's kind of, I'm still kind of working on that, getting a contractor signed up the bank, and then the refinancing process again. And that's where we're at. You have anything? No, no, that's it. Mr. and Ms. Brown, did you subsequently have to pay any subcontractors? Can you explain some of that, please? Oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> Builders Pro Source, the building supply company, um, the cost construction of them, 3300 something. I had to pay them that so they wouldn't put a lien on, of course. And um, another worker who installs doors and all, uh, the cost construction owed him a thousand, and I paid that. And the other uh, trades, HVAC, uh, plumbing, and gas stack out, <coughs> and uh, low voltage. And electrical, everything's installed. It's all been installed. Electrical been approved. 
inspection, but uh, they, they haven't been paid. So if you look on your screen up there, these were, this was documentation provided by you from Economy, mm -hmm. Appliance Heating and Air. All of then we have J&M Plumbing and Gas Incorporated, mm -hmm. Prime Electric Services, LLC, mm -hmm. Builders First Choice you mentioned. I mean, first Plus, source, yeah. not choice. And there's another Builders First Source. And another one. So all of these documents that were on the screen were invoices that you subsequently received and had to pay? I, had, I haven't paid. I've been working with them. Um, they've been real nice. They want to, you know, finish their electrical work or their HVAC work. And so they haven't um, threatened me with a lien. And I, I've been touching base with them, telling them I'm working with the bank. And when, I, when the contract gets on board and I start receiving draws, I can take care of them. Although I did give the economy uh, two weeks ago, I gave them $2,000 to just make, keep them happy. Yes, sir. Very good. Any more other questions? Mr. Lacoste, it's your opportunity to address for the board. So I wanted to respond to a couple of points discussed there. Um, we'll see if it's accepted or not. As I've stated previously, I did inherit a decimated business when I gained control. So a lot of these items uh, mentioned subcontractor payments, those same subcontractors that Jay were just referring to are still operating with me as well in other areas on ongoing projects because um, they understand that as well. Um, Design build timeline, um, Melissa did mention uh, timeline there with the permitting, um, as I discussed prior. This is a little, from a little bit different stance. That was insurance. This is uh, non-insurance. It being design build in nature, I don't have a set of plans. So that's a part of that project scope. It's actually not just a construction contract. It's a design build contract. So once that uh, initial prelim scope is completed, that's when we did apply and receive a permit and start work at that time. Um, uh, clients pulling out again with the hysteria surrounding this case. Uh, Mr. Carey did just sit here and allude to the same thing. Um, when everything hit the fan, when I was drawn into uh, my brother in law's um, involvements with this board, um, no shame to him. I have a family tie there, and media got a hold of that. And uh, obviously, there's being misconduct to this board, re resulting in the wrongful removal of my license in Escambia County, which I'm still pursuing. Um, Clients got scared, though I will say this was prior to licensing. So this project could have and should have been finished, should have never been affected. With the hysteria, a client made an emotional decision. Again, client side performed for, obviously respected. So either one of two things happened. It can only be one of two things. Either I performed all these years, had a great relationship with all these people, as you've heard today, was doing a great job, got the project to this point, and then one day I just decided, woke up and decided, I'm going to stop performing and nothing's going to ever happen about it. People just forget. Either that happened or some event took place to cause people to all pull out at the same time. And you don't like it much like others when I describe, hey, I don't have a choice in that. I, I wish I did. I'm still standing in front of you. I'm still trying to correct the matter. I, I don't not care, as you've alluded to. I, I do, and I'm still here, and I'm trying. In this very case, I still had a license. Work was still being performed even in my absence. A client was disturbed, made an emotional decision to pull out of a contract because of unrelated events, and that decision caused their project to halt and stand still. They've also mentioned the differences in the cost. They received uh, bids themselves on completion of the work. That's going to be not quite nearly nearly a double of our original project cost, which is a, a well-founded um, contract price at that time prior to COVID, prior to Sally, prior to bridge closures. Um, I've never billed you for any escalations. I've never asked for an additional dime. So what you're asking me to do is cover 
those additional costs of subcontractors, though they're three times the amount they were at the time that we contracted and that we estimated and designed the project for the Browns. So this uh, kind of adds to that ongoing list there. Um, the bank, as Kerry mentioned, with the hysteria going on, they were one of the parties that actually first caught wind. They called every single client. They're, they're probably, the, aside from Channel 3 News, the, the widest spread carrier of the hysteria. Um, there was a lot of misinformation shared, and I don't mean by the Browns. I, I don't think they said anything malicious or, or that wasn't true that was told to them. Misinformation was shared by the bank to the Browns and other clients. Um, a couple of the claims they made to him, let's see, that they would not allow him to be the owner builder and finish his own project. That's incorrect. They just didn't take a firm stance against the bank. They have allowed other clients to drag their projects to completion. I know that to be fact. Uh, the bank wants to refinance because they have a gain through monetary benefit. They did work with As a matter of fact, the bank, I alluded uh, earlier to other clients that I'm, I have worked for and completed or I'm still working for. Um, those, that same lender is involved on those projects. Those clients took a firm stance and said, no, we're working with them. We want our project done, and you're going to play ball with us. The bank did just that. Other clients, they swindled into thinking they had limited options. That's partially why we are where we are on these projects. Again, when I speak on those absolute facts, people don't like them. They have emotional responses. They think it's blame shifting, but everything I've just stated is absolute Fact, if you take all emotion and opinion out of it. Um, let's see. Things should be allowed. Clients should remain. Clients pulled out. Design build. Um, clients change orders and, and bills still do. So uh, one thing that's being pinned on me now is the uh, requirement to pay all of these bills and future work and, and ongoing work of subcontractors. In the midst of a project, if you pull out and they're still bills do, escalation clauses do, um, draws do, you've halted your own project. You've, you've halted my ability to perform and you've taken away my right to receive any more monies to perform on those things. So why am I still held responsible to make those payments on a, on a project I'm not performing if they're past my level of completion and past what I've been paid to do? Anything else? Any questions? Mr. Lacoste, yes, just a few questions um, from that would also, you know, work with this case, but it was some statements you made in, in some of the previous hearings. Um, you said that you are only part owner of Lacoste Construction Group, right? Yes, and at, at, at this time, um, at the time of these cases in discussion, yes, that was formed a little bit differently, but same is true. Who were the other members? Um, Genesis. Genesis owned a 50% share. And you own the other half? Own a company that owns the other half. What's the name of that company? So I'm just trying to get the makeup of this. So Genesis owns 50% and then you own a company that owns the other 50%. Correct. And you qualify the whole Lacoste Construction Group with your license. There's no other qualifier. With our oper our operating agreement has other things in place with the financings with a, with an officer and. But charge. you're the qualifier for the complete Lacoste Construction Group. The general contractor license qualifier that is correct. Okay, so who is Sigma Enterprises LLC? That is a separate company. But that's who's listed on your um, corporation. That, yes, that's, that's a separate company out of state that has ownership in Lacoste. So there's more than just you and Genesis then? No, some of that ownership is transferred. Yes. So I'm looking at some biz and it's for your, mm -hmm. your company, Lacoste Construction Group LLC. And it, it lists Sigma Enterprises LLC as an authorized member. I'm just trying to get all the key places because you keep saying you're just this small portion and it's all other. I didn't, I didn't say a small portion. Well, I mean, earlier you said that you I didn't say a small have portion. a piece. 
-hmm. and other there are no, other correct. players. That's correct. Okay, I'm just trying to determine who no, all the other players more accurate, are. Accurate language. Okay, all right. Understood. Yeah, the the same parties you're you're referring to um, didn't pay some of their large bills when they made their exit and transferred some of these things, so they wouldn't have to deal with this. Um, and I was told, much like the bill up here from Builders First Source, I was told that all of that was paid in my absence. That's part of what I'm describing when I say I inherited some of this. Later on, I was, I was told that that's why they didn't pay their bills. Instead of paying their bills to me, they covered those other bills and would have totaled roughly the same. It was not until later that I learned that those bills were never paid. Okay, yeah. so, so. That's a good question. You keep mentioning in your absence. How long were you absent from the business? Roughly a couple months towards the beginning of this year, and then didn't have control until much later. I didn't have access to the office, any of this documentation. Some of the things I'm still describing waiting on now. So, so all those things were taken from me. Their administration that was supposed to come in and take over and help actually extracted a bunch of information or their attachments to it um, and rummaged through my files. I only received a portion <laughs> of that back, and if, which is 2022. Most of that is electronic or in clouds. I have not had any access to that. All I know is that a, a gentleman with the first name of Anthony that works in IT that apparently lives in Orlando now <laughs> used to handle that for us. I spoke to the fellow uh, maybe two or three times over the years, given my um, employees permission to set some of those things up. Um, I got a number yesterday uh, that was supposed to belong to him and apparently doesn't anymore. So that's something ongoing. Thank you. Mr. Lacoste, so you said in your absence someone was supposed to be paying those invoices and you referenced whenever you came back in after after your absence, they blocked you from accessing stuff. Who was supposed to be paying those invoices during your absence and who is the they that blocked you from obtaining your own information? Uh, the em employees of Genesis or employees of the other companies that those owners own. So in other words, the owners of Genesis own other businesses, their employees, their administration was bridging over, to, to kind of bridge the gap and, and help out during that time. And instead, um, things were things were not handled the way that they were supposed to be. Matter of fact, uh, something very, very relevant um, to this very case and in every case where we've had a similar situation, the very last uh, section, subsection of my contract, 6.7, going by memory there, actually describes this very scenario. Um, never did I think I'd be in a situation like this, as you can imagine, but um, it was actually in the event of me being hurt or even in the unfortunate event of my death that one of the other owners was a Florida licensed general contractor and was gonna step in. That way, it protected both Lacoste Construction Group and it protected the client. So um, that was an agreement that the Browns and every other client agreed to. If anything would happen to me or I was incapacitated in any way, the project would still move forward. So when I say they've made an emotional decision that they've actually breached their own contracts, that's what I'm referring to. So disregarding sections of the contract terms that they agreed to, they've made decisions to breach without my knowledge and then I inherited some of these things. So, so what you've stated basically is you as a qualifier for Lacoste Construction Group, you were unable to perform your own duties required by your license, and that Genesis and Sigma Enterprises and the other parties to this group were supposed to step in and fulfill those obligations in your absence. Oh, that would that would be only partially correct. Um, I could be on vacation in China for 500 years and have someone with site supervision communicating with me. DR Horton does it all the time. I don't mean to throw any other company under the bus, but any large builder Thank operates you. the same exact way. Thank you. So what roles do those other companies actually play for Lacoste Construction Group? You're the qualifier, you're the GC. What roles do they play? Helping with operations, planning, um, uh, CFO measures, things of that nature. What exactly does Sigma Enter provide? enterprises provide for Lacoste Construction Group? Because they're listed on your your LLC. That's so, just partial ownership. So they perform no role other than not, ownership? Not Sigma. Okay. Who owns Sigma Enterprises? That's why that's separate. I, 
I own part part of Southern Salem Enterprises. So that's my own. That's store. also your own company. Correct. Has partial ownership Correct. along with you. Correct. Okay. So who, not not at that time. I want to be very clear. We got we got to make sure that we're communicating accurately because a lot of that we either share misinformation or we share part of the information, and that's why we have so many the booing and snake. That's why this is giving you understand. the opportunity to make sure you clarify it all completely. Understood. I appreciate that. So who was the contractor who was supposed to fill in under their license should these events occur prior so, so to Sigma? Thank you. The, the two other owners of Genesis were Kevin Stevens and Blaine Flynn. Who was the contractor that was supposed to step in and pull? Blaine Flynn was the other license holder. Okay. Thank you. Did you ask these other entities of why they pulled out from this situation and and left you during your absence with no well, one to fulfill your absolutely. obligations? <laughs> absolutely. But there was monetary gain there. They took... Uh, large properties that we own together they took out of my name in my absence and um, didn't perform on their end of their personal homes um, not blame Flynn the other gentleman they never paid any of those bills I was told by them that that's why they were not paying their bills because they they cleared up all of the debt for the company it was not until later that I started getting contacted by some of the subcontractors and some of the vendors that I'd had long-standing relationship with, or I contacted them on ongoing projects and found out that, unfortunately, in fact, those bills were not paid. I was misinformed. So whenever you discovered all of this, did you then in turn contact every homeowner that you had contracted with and explain that situation in detail and give provide them with, hey, this is my plan moving forward? Yes, even the Browns themselves. Yes, I have phone records that say otherwise. So, As a matter of fact, my first couple of days home, the first thing that I did, the, the first full day, the second day, the first full day home, what I started on was going down a list that was provided for me, every bit of contact information that I did have, and called every single client. And that is exactly why I have ongoing clients. And you have that documentation to provide to us where you contacted every single contract that you had? Um, I, may, I actually may have the contact list in front of me, actually. I'm not sure that I do. I may have the contact information in my notes. I know I was working off of that. Um, I absolutely do have the, um, I, or I can obtain the phone log that shows where I've, I've spoke with Jackie Brown. On not, not just spoke with, but specifically detailed a plan well, moving that was, forward. That, that was the point of the phone call. That's the only point of reaching them. Um, but I didn't record my phone call. But I would have no other reason to call them multiple times. Mr. Ms. Brown. Mr. Ms. Brown, if you could please come forward. That way that the board... I contacted him because I wanted my house cleans back. And he went on and on about a long, all his excuses and everything. And, and finally trying to end the conversation. Never heard of Genesis, never heard of any of that. Ms. Brown, you never had him tell you he was gonna have any plan to finish the job? No. Of any kind? No, sir. You heard what she said. We all heard what she said, Chairman, but I, I would have no other reason to speak with her multiple times. Uh, you had a contract. That they breached. You still had a contract. That they breached, and when I tried to perform on the contract, <laughs> they fired me because of the same situations I've already discussed. Mr. Lacoste, what steps have you made from the time of your absence? I mean, we just I just asked if you had contacted all of those that you had contracts with. What steps have you made now 
Have you employed new staff? Have you made efforts to, after these complaints were filed, have you made efforts? Detail some of that to this board. I don't know that it holds direct relevance. You're, you're kind of digging into secondary information, uh, but I don't mind sharing at least some. You decimated my business. No, I couldn't run out and hire new employees. I need to pay those employees. I, I don't ever purposefully take on things that I can't pay for. So I've, I've tried to dig and claw and, and pull myself up by the bootstraps and try to save my business. That's what I came home for. I tried every effort to save my business. People that continue to work with me, I have made every effort to finish their projects. And those who have decided not to work with me, I don't have control over that. Um, some of them are sad situations. Some of them I, I dislike because I, I highly respect the individuals. Uh, the Browns are another family that I had a great working relationship with up until the point they pulled out. It's unfortunate. I don't like it any more than anyone else does. I wish I would have had the opportunity to finish that project. I would have if they would only have agreed to it. Uh, again, I know that the bank told them a lot of things and they were probably swayed that direction. I don't, I don't believe it was personal, but they ultimately did make a decision and tied my hands. Um, and then there came a point later on down the road in the timeline that the board tied my hands and, and took the Escambia County license. And so past that point, Jennifer, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what else I, I can do without a license and without the, uh, you know, ability uh, with the permission of the clients to work on their projects and, you know, without um, with a decimated business and not the uh, having no, you know, monetary resources to do so. Um, I would like to make a motion to move this to disciplinary hearing based on the allegations presented second motion made and seconded any discussion yes like that there'll be time at the disciplinary hearing for evidence to be presented should he provide it at that time y yes sir mr. bell that's accurate as I've said earlier today um, these homeowners have have spent a lot of time yes. in this and I, and we really want to get this process through for them and so we're going to work really hard to get this on the November 2nd hearing and any evidence or documentation should be provided prior to that that window that deadline window if it's not it can always be provided day of thank you M Melissa do you recall when the permit was pulled uh, on the this matter's okay. over correct it's, it's over. So we'll, we'll, dis, we'll dismiss more information? Okay. Any additional sure. information can be provided during that disciplinary Thank you. I just want to make for the record that we, we see there's an obvious <laughs> uh, upset right members. It's become very personal. You are out of order. We're in the process of a motion. Thank you. We have a motion. To move to disciplinary hearing. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion's approved and take this case to disciplinary hearing. Staff's going to request a brief break before we move into disciplinary. We'll take a 10 minute break.
sir. I'm going to be out of order. I'm going to pull one out of order. Yes, sir. Ready whenever you oh, are. Is that what you're asking? Okay. I'm going to do it. You ready? Jennifer's going to handle it. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We have a request for the disciplinary hearings that item eight, so it'll be uh, eight eight, be pulled to the forefront. Uh, Mr. Bassett, the complainant for that case, has some prior obligations, so he would just request that it, it could be heard first. It's at the board's discretion. We just had the request I have to ask. Mr. Bassett saying he would rather not jump ahead of anybody. He did not realize. So we pull that back, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So item 8-1 is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG29110398. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208115COM. It's in regard to Charles and Tony Spatch, the homeowner complainants at 615 Crown Cove, Pensacola, Florida. This is within the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. and Ms. Spatch, you're present today. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Mr. Lacoste appears to no longer be present. I was just waiting for Mr. Warner to return. Okay. Okay. We're going to make sure that Mr. Lacoste just hadn't stepped out of the room. I see that Mr. Lacoste has returned. Mr. Lacoste, are you going to provide testimony in regard to this hearing? Thank you. All right, is there anyone else in the audience that is going to provide testimony in regard to this hearing? No response. At this time, I'm going to have Mr. and Ms. Spatch uh, sworn in. If you could, could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and then we'll also have Mr. Lacoste sworn in as well. Just a reminder, Ms. Reber was already sworn in. Uh, Tony Spatch, 615 Crown Cove, Pensacola, Florida. Charles Spatch, 615 Crown Cove, Pensacola, Florida. Mr. Lacoste. Thank you. Would you like us to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. At this time, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing. Hang on. Refresh my memory. It was on September 20th. September 20th, 2022. I thought it was the 20th, but I didn't want to second guess myself and say something wrong. Um, so, and the uh, testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022 be moved into evidence. Testimony as 
found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Jesse W. Little Cross, case number 2208115COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like, sign it. Being none, the motion is approved and moved into evidence. Melissa, did you receive any additional documentation from Mr. Misbatch or from Mr. Lacoste in regard to this case? Um, no, I did not. Um, the Spatches have all of their documentation listed. Mr. Misbatch, I believe that you handed a document to Ms. Hankins, Assistant County Attorney, um, in regards to a termination of AOB. Correct. Is that correct? We are making copies of that now uh, to provide to you as evidence, and staff will request that that additional documentation be moved into evidence as soon as it's so received. Being none, the motion to add the additional document as evidence is approved. Thank you, sir. Mr. Misbatch, this is your opportunity to speak to the alleged violations within the administrative complaint. We're not going to rehash the complete um, case. We've heard that you know before, unless there's anything new to be provided. Um, it's your opportunity to okay, address well. the board. First of all, it's about the paperwork. You're going to see two copies. He's trying to speak into the mic. Okay, one of the assignment of benefits copies uh, we sent to Jesse. Now, we received, we did not receive a phone call from Jesse. Charlie had his number on his cell phone, so he called Jesse after all this happened and asked him to sign, you know, would he sign a release to get us out of the assignment of benefits? He said, yes, I would. So we typed up one and sent it to him. That's the one of the ones you're going to get. And he sent us back a separate one saying, you need to sign this first. It releases him harmless or releases his responsibility, I guess, for the finishing of the project. So we would not sign that one because we are requesting restitution of the monies paid directly to Jesse from the insurance company for $102,274. Now, we received notification from the insurance company, official notification of the total amount they paid to Jesse was actually $159,437.08. Out of that, now we, we took out our relocation expenses because they've been paying our rent because we haven't been living at home and less 10% that Noble had to receive out of all those checks, and less, less the work done, which Jesse says is not right. But his office was closed. We got no information, no written information about how much it was worth, the work that he, done, he had done. But his general foreman gave us an estimate of maybe 15,000 uh, maybe up to 20000 but po probably no more than that. And then an estimate from just a, a separate contract worker that came to do some of the sheetrock work. He did not think it was even $15,000 worth of work. I, I don't know. I'm not a contractor. But we subtracted 20000 for the work that um, we thought he had completed. And that left the 102274 for restitution that we're requesting. We are also recommending that y'all send his name to the state of Florida for any other licenses or certification, anything he has be revoked. Uh, we are also asking for a referral from y'all to the uh, Florida, Florida Home Residential Recovery Fund to see if there's anything they can do for us. So uh, I, I think that's all we were gonna say. You know, and AOB, I just thought y'all should see that he wouldn't sign what we... Did he sign it? No, he didn't. So... Uh, there was two. 
One was to release. I don't understand. One was when you released him, the other one being the responsibility. Correct. And the other one was just a simple release. And we've got some a little bit of money left from the insurance company that we could get if he would sign the release, a simple release of AOB. But he won't do it. Mr. and Ms. Batch, earlier you stated an amount that you would, were requesting for restitution. Can you restate that amount, please? Sure. I didn't get to write it down. $102,274 and no pennies. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Board, I think it, you could um, present to Miss Melissa or one of them some accounting on this, right? As far yes. as the, yes. he was given 159, and you're at 102, so you'd be able to explain oh, yes, that out. Okay, that. All right. yeah. I, and you're being generous, but I just want to make sure that that can be turned in for us uh, to be able to substantiate this amount for you. It yes. should be part of the supporting documentation within the backup to the agenda. Yeah, it should be in. It's in, it's in that right. Yeah. Okay. All the canceled checks and everything. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Y'all have any questions for me, us? We, we have a question. We'll call you back. Okay. Right thank you. Mr. Lacoste, this is your opportunity to speak to the alleged violations within the administrative complaint. Again, we're not going to rehash the whole scenario. We're just going to stay focused on what's in the administrative complaint. Yes, and, and my understanding is this is a disciplinary hearing at this time, right? Okay, this is one of the ones that was happened in my absence prior, so I didn't even I wasn't aware that they would even be here today. I was informed about the other ones. Um, I, I didn't realize that they had already gone on. They've already had their probable cause. Um, as they stated, yes, we came in, contracted, um, did a lot of the work. The, the work is being misrepresented. Um, the client cost estimating um, something that just took place back here uh, resulted in, in um, their their response to um, me trying to, to make sense of for them the, the difference between client cost estimating and true cost estimating by GC in this field. Um, they actually... Uh, admitted where they got theirs from was uh, on a whim from the uh, mere opinion of a not a project manager, a superintendent and one of my painters. So that's that's just as relevant as me stopping someone in the parking lot. They have no idea. That's a $14 an hour employee. You're asking them, hey, how much would you charge for this? Um, evidently not enough because you would have lost a lot of money. Um, you've heard them describe how much it costs to get the project done. You've also heard the clients you've today describe how the cost is almost twice as much to get it done. But when they come up with cost estimates for what I've actually performed, we seem to be on the other end of the spectrum. We can get those done super cheap. It's just this random number we throw out. But when it comes to all actuality, what needs to be done, all of a sudden, oh, it takes 10 times as much as, as their estimate to actually perform the work. So I do want to point that out, that we're, we're, we're literally just pulling these numbers out of thin air. Um, I didn't receive the funds personally, therefore I don't personally have the funds. Um, just like the very first case where we awarded Miss um, Gray, Sandra Gray, on, on a whim, just whatever she asked for, despite all the documentation I proved that I've done more work than she actually paid for or her insurance carrier paid for, um, we just literally handed her that money. Um, that is why I don't have a Scambia County license today. That is the sole reason I don't have one um, in all actuality. Um, so as these prices are generated, I want to see, um, them being generated on a whim is what causes me personally, as I'm trying to regenerate and rebuild, um, this, this due bill that's just not in touch with reality. Um, another point, uh, board states the client is being generous, but has no understanding of how the client simply decided what they want to receive. Mr. Lister just sat and said, uh, you're being generous with that amount. How do you know that? You don't you don't know the scope of what's performed or how they generated that number. Based on documentation. Mr. Claus, uh, my statements are based on documentation, not just figments out of the air. Yes, but but what they've shared and their opinion are, are based on that, are, are based on the opinions of mere employees. So what, in all actuality, what we did is we took the rear elevation of a three-story building and completely rebuilt that. that that's not true what you're insinuating is not true i didn't which part 
the part that you just said that I don't know what I'm talking about. I am basing it on documentation that's legally brought into this board, <clears throat> and I'm not just pulling something out of the air. I think there's others that have a problem with the truth and not these on the board. So and that's not filling the blank. You're, you're mistaking my comment. It was not towards that. You're, you're making that assessment based on what they've provided No, you. sir. I'm basing on the documentation that is submitted. So are you aware that we have demolished and rebuilt the interior of an entire three-story residential structure? The, the entire rear have elevation? Have you looked at the documentation? Everything's right there. Well, as I stated, it's I didn't even know you did, uh, Miss uh, Jennifer, would you, sorry, they're in conversation. Miss Jennifer, would you mind going back to that one that he did receive? Uh, you, you put on the board, yeah. You did receive, it's right there in the big screen. You did receive notification of this. You, you, for some reason, you don't receive notification of a lot of stuff. You don't, and I go back to one yeah. more thing to you that you need to know the construction <clears> law. <throat> I don't care how many partners you got. You're the last knee holder that this board is talking to today. We're not talking to John Doe and Jim Smith, whoever. We're talking to you because you held the license, and by law, you are financially responsible. I don't care about what you had done in your corporation. By this law right up here, you were responsible. You need to, you need to really know that. I do understand that. No, and I, do I don't think subsections you do because well. everything keeps blowing off to somebody else. According to what we up here have to regulate, it's by the Florida law for the building license E, of which that is you and not Jane Doe, John, Jim, whoever. <clears throat> and so you are responsible for all of this. Period. So. I, I do understand. I do understand what you're saying. At the same time, the information I've shared, I, I want to point out, I haven't shared any opinions, guys. I haven't shared any It don't matter what I, you've shared, Mr. I've Cross. Shared, I'm not trying I've to be rude I've shared relevant you. facts on it. Any, not, anytime that my, my hands were tied or I didn't have a part in, in making that decision, that's all I've shared. I haven't shared any emotional statements. I haven't shared any opinions. legally, up here, all that you've done outside of the realm in your business has nothing to do with us. What we have to do with is you as a licensed holder who is responsible, regardless of you. If you delegated it, that's you. But... That's not us. We look to you, and you have got to take responsibility. I do for everything I'm tied to and responsible for, and everything that I've done willingly and made a choice in, I, I do. So I, you, I do have a heart, Mr. Lister. I, I, I do. I'm not saying you don't, Jesse. You may be a wonderful guy. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know you, really. really I know you, but I don't know you. What I do know is this. It don't matter. you gotta, you got to hear me. You are responsible, bro, legally, for everything you pull a permit for because you are the license holder. It don't matter if you put a CFO in there that ripped you off. It don't matter. You are responsible. Up here you are. In a legal court, that's a whole different realm. That's why you're getting all this coming to you. And you are responsible. I do understand what you're saying. What, what I was been providing you is the statutes do have subsections and the contracts do state something else that provide who those it responsibilities don't matter. go okay, to. Again, I, I feel like I'm wasting my time here, but it, you're, it doesn't matter what your contract says to us. I'm up talking here. about state statutes as well. I'm sorry for talking over you. Your contract does not matter to us up here when what we're dealing with today. What we're dealing with is legally, according to Florida law, construction chapter 49, you are responsible Period, no clauses. I don't care if you put in your contract that says, but I'm not responsible, but you are responsible here. Well, that's been a large issue with this board is what you just mentioned is we don't care about the contract details. But what we're judging this on is the contract details and where I perform them, where I, I provide don't documentation take my words on that. Out of that's, well, I'm saying something LaCoste. prior to you. I'm saying something prior to your involvement. Mr. Lacoste. I do. Understood, and I do want to comment on this because it's relevant. Um, they've, they've changed it on me, but on the, if you would put that back up on the the package, for the Milton, was that me receiving it, or was that was was that you sending it? That's you. That's me sending certified mail to you at your place of residence. Okay, I just wanted to make that clear because there was more misinformation shared in the last hearing 
or the last one was actually in my absence. The hearing, the last hearing I attended that I was notified on, there was uh, misinformation um, where it was shared and discussed that you had my signatures receiving all of these. That's not the case, and I can actually provide the board all of the uh, documentation from the USPS themselves and where they actually tear all these cards off. They do not do that where they were, they were not delivering them to my home at all. So I can share that and I can share the notes they hand wrote on the back of them because of COVID, they don't require a signature. So you did misinform, um, you directly, Jennifer, you misinformed the board and you misinformed Channel 3 News that you had signatures for me. On if that. I can be clear as to this matter, um, this is not, uh, I would direct the board that what we're dealing with and what he's referring to without something specific is not relevant to what you to your determination. The question is, did he have notice to be here today? And um, the and statement was proper notice was sent to the respondent. So if I could just keep the board focused on what we need to deal with. What? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Lacoste, do you have anything else in regard to the alleged violations within the administrative complaint? Um, just that, that you, you brought to attention, so I wanted to respond to, that you're saying is now irrelevant. All right. So for the board, Mr. Lacoste, you can have a seat. Thank you. Um, for the board, um, at the probable cause hearing, the board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837C8 and Escambia County Code Section 1837C11. Does the board find that the respondent violated termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. I'll make a motion to find him guilty of count one, uh, $3,000 fine and revocation on this one or, and revocation. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? I'd like to make an amendment to the motion to make it the maximum amount of $5,000 plus the revocation. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Motion made and seconded. We'll vote on the modification to the amendment. 5,000. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, likes aye. Being none, the motion to change it to $5,000 is approved. Now, the motion to approve the guilty verdict. And just for the record, Mr. Bell had to leave the dais. He was not feeling well. We still have a quorum in place, yes. though. All As those to those in favor of the amendment, I'm not of the, of the motion to find him guilty of count one. Ms. Mr. Matthews, I think you just yeah. voted on that. I think you no, already you did voted it. On the change to the oh, thank you, sir. On the original motion, which is he's guilty. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to find him guilty of count one is approved. As to count two, does this board find the respondent in violation? of a finding that the contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Motion to find them guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made second. Is there any further discussion? Being done, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being done, the motion 
guilty of count two with a five thousand dollar fine and revocation is approved. We now move to item eight two. No, sir. We'll stay with this one for a few more seconds, if okay. you don't mind. So, um, there was a request for restitution. That's right. Mr. and Ms. Fatch voiced that amount as being $102,274. Is it $102,000? $102,000. Mr. Chair, I motion that we order restitution to the complainant in the amount of $102,274 with the clause that they are able to come back to this board again if it sees that it exceeds this amount. Motion? Second. second. Motion made and second. Are there any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for restitution of 102000 Whatever it is. $274. $274 is approved with the idea that he can come back if he has more or if they have more. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, I also make a motion that we recommend to the Construction Industry Licensing Board a recommendation for them for any further action with fines, suspensions, revoking as necessary from their position. Second. Is that stated correctly? I, what I'm trying to say is I want them to be able to, to, to recommend to them to uh, do whatever finding and revoking that they see necessary. So the, so do you, um, I think the confusion is because you also said um, suspended but is it your intent to rep for your motion to recommend that his license be uh, revoked and the necess and them impose fines on that? Okay. So I would like to restate that motion. Thank you, Mr. Lister. So go ahead. I'd like to restate the motion that we recommend to the Construction Industry Licensing Board for them to pursue the deemed necessary fines and revoking of the license. That's it. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for the recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board is approved. Now we'll go to eight. Two. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair Chairman. Give me just a moment. Item 8-2 is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, State Registered License Number RR2828120001, Contractor Competency Board, Complaint Number 220692, COM. It's in regard to April Gunnell, the homeowner complainant at 712 Whitney Drive, Pensacola, Florida. This is, is, this is within the city limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Ms. Gunnell, are you present? Thank you. Mr. Banks, are you present? Mr. Banks is not present. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to provide testimony for this hearing? No response. At this time, Ms. Gunnell, if you could please come forward. If you could please state your name and address for the record and be sworn in. Um, April Gunnell, 712 Whitney Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32503. Please all for the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber was already sworn in. All right. Staff would request that the backup documentation and the testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022 be moved into evidence. 
I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Skimmick County staff concerning contractor company board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 220692COM be entered into evidence for considerations for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded in further discussion. They are here. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion continues to enter into evidence. Ms. Gunnell, this, uh, sorry, not Ms. Gunnell, Ms. Reaver, did you receive any additional documentation um, and if so, is it attached to the agenda as backup? I didn't receive any additional documentation. Thank you. Now, Ms. Gunnell, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the alleged violations within the administrative complaint. Okay. Um, I've obviously been before you before, and I've stated my case, and I think it's pretty much become very common. It's the same pattern that we're seeing with uh, banks and most of the cases that you've heard, so I don't want to rehash the entire thing. Um, you know, I just wanted to also make a statement today about the fact that I've heard many times over that, you know, sure, he was a good guy, he made mistakes, his business acumen wasn't so grand, um, but after sitting here and watching this case after case after case after case go by, I just think we need to be looking at the fact that he is a thief and he is a crook and he needs to be held accountable for everything he has done to everybody that has been sitting before you and we need swift judgment for this man because I'm worried to this day that he is out there doing the same thing to other people and they're going to have the same experiences that we have all had. Now today it was really nice to see that people actually didn't have anything done to their properties, you know, but the rest of us have. And I'm sitting there with a hole in my home. I'm doing dishes by my chicken coop. You know, I've been doing that since December 6th and I'm a teacher. I don't have a lot of money. And I'm sitting here worried, how am I going to pay for my kitchen to be reconstructed? I don't know how long I'm going to live like this. You know, and the man sat before me, and here's the fun fact about his moral character. It's not a mistake. I sat there with him. He looked me straight in the eye and I said, listen, I'm not comfortable with the 50% deposit because this money I'm giving you took me two years to get back from another contractor who took it outright, stole it two years and he sat there and looked me straight in my eyes and said you do not have to worry this is going to be just a wonderful process with me i'm going to give you that kitchen that you've always dreamed of and he knew he knew at that moment that was april 2021 and as i've seen this had been going on for so long unbeknownst to us no red flags highly recommended and he lied so his character is not one of just making mistakes or bad business acumen. He is a crook. And I'm ready to see him be put behind bars. So I really would like to ask for restitution of $16,000. I would also like to have a referral to the Florida Recovery Fund, if I may so, just to inquire upon. Um, and, and, Itemized restitution? Do I need to? I believe she previously provided documentation and it's in okay. your backup. Okay. So, yeah, thank you very much. Just so you understand, when it comes to the CILB, which is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. we would handle the, uh, the board handles having a referral done as far as, as what they recommend to his license, but um, uh, that doesn't satisfy, you still need to contact them about it's your right. case. I'm okay. Aware of that and have okay. The documentation and everything. And uh, have you also been contacted or been in touch with the bankruptcy court? The bankrupt. Yeah. Okay, good. Make sure you stay on top of that. I will. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, nothing else, Your Honor. Nothing else. All right. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you very much. We sorry you had to go through it. Just so you know, um, there's a 1.30 beginning of hearings, <laughs> and so we're trying to um, see if we can find a solution for that 1.30 hearings. 
Um, so that's what she's working on. I believe she was, we were going to count one. Yes. All right. I got it, Tracy. You got it? Okay. Yep. I'm right here. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of a finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting? Thank you. Motion to find guilty on count one, a uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Proposed like sign. Being none, the motion for guilty of count one for the $5,000 fine is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of a termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for the abandonment? Motion to find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for guilty of count two and $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of failure to notify residential property owner of the recovery fund? Is this a repeat? It is a repeat violation. Motion to find guilty on count three, a uh, thousand dollar fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion for guilty count three and a one thousand dollar fine is approved. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation for failing to apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made? Repeat violation. Repeat. Okay. Motion to find guilty on count four, a uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign? Being none. Count four is a, with a five thousand dollar fine and revocation is approved. Thank you, Chair. There has been a request for restitution in the amount of sixteen thousand dollars. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that we grant restitution in the amount of sixteen thousand dollars to the complainant, with the clause that she can come back if it goes higher than that. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. It is any further discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for restitution of $16,000 plus additional if it's available is approved. So in, in trying to keep it with time frames, because I know we have another board meeting that is supposed to be taking place in here shortly. Our recommendations to the CLB, CILB, like we did last week, if you would like to make a blanket recommendation, if they, and then we can Mr. apply Chair, it to Mr. Chair, I would like board. to make a motion that for all of the remaining cases that we forward them to the CILB for their approval for the maximum amount of fine and revoking of the license. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to notify the CILB of a maximum fine and, re and revocation of license is approved for all future cases. If cases. they should be found in violation. If they're found Thank in violation. You. Thank you. All right. All right, we'll go to A3. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 8.3, Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828-12001. Contractor competency board complaint number 2208109-COM. It's in regard to Angela Barber. 
the homeowner complainant at 4215 Bay Woods Drive, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Ms. Barber, are you present? Thank you. Ms. Uh, and are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Thank you. Mr. Banks, are you present? No response. Uh, Mr. Banks is not present. Ms. Barber, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Staff would request at this time that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Schema County bid staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorded transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 2208109COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. The motion been made to say the end of discussion. Uh, even, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to enter into evidence documentation is approved. Item. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Reber, did you receive any additional documentation attached to the agenda? I mean, and if you did, is it attached to the agenda? I didn't receive any additional documentation. Thank you. Ms. Barber, this is your opportunity to address the alleged violations within the, within the administrative complaint and any restitution. I just have, I have a couple questions because, can you hear me okay? Um, can I ask that my case be forwarded to the Escambia County Sheriff's Department and the Pensacola Police Department for criminal charges? Because many of us have made attempts to get them to file local charges and they won't even let us file a report. And that was one thing that Senator Bronson said we had a right to do. Uh, but they keep going, oh, it's in the state's hands. But we want it on record with our local authorities that we want criminal charges pressed. Ms. Barber, we do forward them all to the state attorney's office. Um, and my suggestion to you would be to make the phone calls to the state attorney's office and put pressure on them. Okay, I know several of us have done that. Mm -hmm. I guess we just, no one really communicates with us where we're at or where we stand or what's going on. There's very poor communication. Um, so that's frustrating. So I guess- Will it be, will it be appropriate to send it to the sheriff and police department? Thank you. Um, the state attorney ultimately would, who, would be the one who has the charging decision. Um, so if you contact the state attorney, they can route it if they needed to go over there or they have their own investigation division and they can handle it that way. So it's kind of out of our hands. Yeah, okay. it really is. Okay. Do you have any additional evidence that hasn't already been presented? No. Um, everything still stands as it was. Uh, I'm asking for the 40000 and restitution. Uh, I took off generously the co small concrete slab that he poured. That was my... $42,000 patio <laughs> that I have. Uh, I took that off and just made it an even 40000 I do want to requ request that my case is forwarded to the CILB for a final judgment because I believe their final judgment is what I need to go to the Florida Recovery Fund. Okay. That, we've already done that. Okay. Well, you I have to. You have to be the one that... Uh, we. The order that comes here is not acceptable to the CILB. You have to handle that with the CILB yourself. Okay, I was made to understand that the judgment here went to CILB and they granted a final. So our final order is referred over to the CILB for them to take further action if this board 
request that they take further action. Okay. And that's what they were saying yeah, the other it, earlier. Their recommendation is to the CILB for okay. them to take You're action. Doing that. Okay. But, and, but I still need to contact them? Yes, you do. Anyone particular to speak to? Or? I think they have a complaint uh, form. I'll look it up while we're finishing up. Okay. For you. Okay. Okay. So I need to do that too. All right. Last thing. And if there's any other funds locally that maybe all of us could appeal to, we keep hearing other funds that are out there. Uh, it'd be great if they could help us out locally. Ms. And Barber, did, did you uh, make sure to contact the bankruptcy attorney for his case? Um, I'm actively involved in that because I'm one of the creditors. Very good. Yeah. All right, but that's it, the 40000 and restitutions. How much? 40,000. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, at the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C11, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837D9J, and Florida Statute 49126-2A1. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837C11? I'm going to shorten. Normally I would read out that violation, but in trying to save some time. Motion find guilty on count one, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Any not? All those in favor say aye. Uh, uh, like sign, being none. The motion to find guilty count one with a five thousand dollar fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section eighteen thirty seven C eight? Motion to find guilty on count two, five thousand dollar fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for guilty, count two with a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837 D9J? Is it a repeat? It is a repeat violation. Motion to find guilty on count $3,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further? Being none, all those. Aye. Say yeah. Uh, <laughs> all those approve. Say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion uh, guilty of count three with a $1,000 fine is approved. As to count four, does the Board find the respondent in violation of Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. Repeat violation. Motion to find guilty on count four, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to find guilty of count four with a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. Now, there has been a request for restitution in the amount of $40,000. Mr. Chair, I move that we give a restitution or restitution in the amount of $40,000 to the complainant with the clause. That if there's other items that come up that she's able to come back to the board for further. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for restitution of $40,000 fine and any future funds would be made available is approved. Just so you know that when, when you say that, we still are restricted by the federal law and the federal bankruptcy, so they would need to come back. We could, they need to come back in a timely manner as long yeah. as that bankruptcy is pending. Thank so you. I, just so you know, that's how we're putting it in the order that it has to be in compliance with federal, state, and local law. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And the recommendation 
The recommendation for CILB is already Stands. been up. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll make sure that we put that into the, the final order. Mr. Chairman, there's two more um, individuals that are going to speak today that have cases before you today. That's um, Ms. Reddit and is it Mr. Fischel? Um, those are the only two people that I have on the list. If we could, I know Ms. Reddit is next. And then if we could call Mr. Fischel, which is number seven on the list, I mean number six on the list, that way we could go ahead and get these witnesses. So be it. Okay. Ms. Reddard, if you'd come forward. And while she's coming forward, let me just make you aware, uh, there's been discussion about the Construction Industry Licensing Board and the Recovery Fund. Um, so what you're looking for on the internet is Florida Homeowners Construction Recovery Fund Claim Form. That's what you're going to have to fill out and get to the CILB. Okay. You want to come on up. Item 4, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208110COM. It's in regard to John and Robbie Reddard, homeowner complainants at 2331 Lansing Drive, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Ms. Reddard is here. And Ms. Reddard, are you going to provide testimony in regard to this hearing? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Banks still is not in the audience. Ms. Reddard, if you could please be sworn in. You saw Ms. Reddard's testimony you're about to give. Is it truthful? Truthful, I think that's truthful. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And Ms. Reber is still sworn. Staff requests that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the September 20th, 2022 <coughs> Probable um, cause hearing be moved oh, into evidence. Thank you. Um, I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Skimmy County staff concerning the contractor company board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 2208110COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move ev uh, documentation into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, was there any additional documentation provided? No, there was not. Everything is in the record. Thank you. Ms. Reddard, this is your opportunity to address the alleged violations within the complaint and any requests for restitution. <clears throat> My name is Robbie Redder, 2331 Lansing Drive, Pensacola, Florida. On the administrative complaint letter that I received from y'all, um, number 15 is incorrect. It um, says the homeowner sent a demand letter to the respondent on July 18, 2022 requesting refund of deposit in excess of value of work completed, which homeowner calculated a deduction of $1,550 for the completed work. We estimate that he has done $65,137.50 worth of work. Thank you for clarifying that. We paid him a total of $146,587.50 and the difference in that and the 65,000 is 81,450, which we sent him a, a refund demand letter for work not completed, but paid for. And we are requesting restitution amount in, in that 81,450 in the recovery fund or however you. Thank you. But that, that's all that I had to add was that 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 1500 1550 was um, not correct and just needed to be higher. We figured he's done more work than that. Thank you. So your your rest, your um, projected restitution your, is 81,450. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Just to make sure if you're um, not already in touch with the bankruptcy court, be sure that you do get in touch with the bankruptcy trustee. And also that form that I was talking about, the Homeowners Construction Recovery Fund claim form, that needs to be submitted by you. So you'll need to pull that off online. It's, the, it's uh, from the Department of Business and Professional Regulation. 
I think we've already done that. Okay, good. All right, so follow up with them and make sure that, find out where your position is in, on that, okay? And we've already gotten a letter from the bankruptcy. Okay. And those are the only two things that, that I'm aware of besides the board entering an order of restitution. Um, there, there may be some things that are being passed around on the uh, internet. Um, just be really careful um, so that you don't get in a, a deeper situation, okay? Don't, don't fall victim to a scam. I'm going to do my best. All right. At the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to the belief that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C11, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837D9J, and Florida Statute 49-126-2A1. As to Count 1, does the board find the respondent in violation of Code Section 1837C11? Motion to find guilty on count one, the $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to find guilty of count one and a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837C8? Motion to find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign, being none. The motion to find guilty on count two and $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837D9J? Repeat violation. A motion to find guilty on count $3,000 fine. Second. <clears throat> motion made and seconded to find guilty on count three and a $1,000 fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none. Count three is with a $1,000 fine is approved. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of Florida Statute 489? 126-2A1. Repeat violation. Motion to find guilty on count four, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those like sign. Being none, the motion for find guilty on count four and a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we order restitution to uh, the complainant in the amount of $81,450 with the ability to come back before the board if so necessary. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for restitution of $81,450 with additional funds as presented is approved. And the recommendation previously stated for the CILB will be included in this final order. Good. We move to item six. Yes. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This one is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, state registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 2208112. COM. It's in regard to Vance Special Homeowner Complainant at 4103 Spinnaker Place, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Fischel, you're present today. Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Banks still is not present. Mr. Fischel, if you will come and state your name and address for the record and be sworn in. Vance Fischel, 4103 Spinnaker Place, Pensacola. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber has already been sworn in. At this time, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022 be moved into evidence. Oh, <laughs> I am sorry. It's been a long morning. Yeah. Miss Joanne, if you'll swear this lovely gentleman in. Mr. 
Now we're going to circle back and move those into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County staff concerning contractor company board complaints and investigations and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 2208112COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move documents into evidence is approved. Again, Mr. Fischel, I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, Ms. Reber, uh, was there any additional documentation provided for this case? No, there was not. Mr. Fischel, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the alleged violations and any restitution amount. Yeah, um, I don't have anything new to add you've heard the story before so i'm seeking fifteen thousand in restitution to be used for application to the recovery fund fifteen thousand fifteen thousand thank you we'll take care of it. all right at the probable cause hearing the board determined that there was probable cause to believe the respondent violated Code Section 1837-C11, Code Section 1837-D9-J, and Florida Statute 49-126-2A1. As to Count 1, does the Board find the respondent in violation of 1837-C11? Motion to find guilty on Count 1, a $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, count one and $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837 D9J? Motion find guilty on count $2,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion for count two guilty and $1,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of Florida Statute 489-126-2A1? Motion find guilty on count three, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded, $5,000 fine. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Say aye. Opposed like sign. Count three is, and a $5,000 fine revocation is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that we order restitution to the complainant in the amount of $15,000 with the clause of being able to approach the board again if these costs escalate. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion for the restitution of $15,000 and any future funds as available is approved. The previous recommendation to the CILB will be included in this final order. All right. Now we'll go back to five. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Oh, or is Bassett still here? Mr. Bassett had to leave. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and move forward. Mm -hmm. Number five. Five, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, state registered license number RR2828120001, contractor competency board complaint number 2208111COM. It's in regard to Timothy and Vicki Nagel, the homeowner complainants at 2110 Carbor Drive, Pensacola, Florida 32506. Neither party is present. Time frame. Okay. They they could not stay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Banks is also not present at this time. I'm going to just request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022, be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to Skimia County staff concerning contractor company board complaints and investigation 
and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 2208111COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to enter into evidence, all documentation is approved. Thank you. Ms. Reber, was any additional documentation provided for this hearing? Uh, no, it was not, but I do, uh, from the previous hearing, have a restitution amount. And can you please provide that amount? The $111,723.50. Um, the Nagels are uh, incurring more expenses with uh, another state agency for the minimal land clearing that banks performed. Okay. At the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that respondent violated code section 1837 C11. Code section 1837D9J and Florida statute 489-126-2A1. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837C11? Motion to find guilty on count one, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion count one guilty and $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837 D9J? Motion to find guilty on count $2,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, like sign. Being none, although the uh, Motion is a, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, being none. Count two's found guilty with a $1,000 fine. As to is count approved. three. Is does, approved. The, does the board find a respondent in violation of Florida statute 489-126-2A1? Motion find guilty on count three, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Motion for guilty count three with a five thousand dollar fine and revocation is approved. There, we there need re uh, request for restitution. Mr. Chair, I move that we order. Restitution in the amount of $111,723.50 to the complainant with the ability to approach the board as deemed necessary if it increases. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion to grant restitution of $111,723.50 plus any additional that could be produced in the future is approved. And the recommendation to the CILB previously stated will be included in this final order. Good. We move to item seven. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, state registered license number RR2828120001, contractor competency board complaint number. 2208113COM. It's in regard to Mark Haverly, the homeowner complainant at 206 North G Street, Pensacola, Florida, the city limits. Neither party is present, so at this time staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022 be moved into evidence. Proper notice was sent, FYI. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Skimmy County staff concerning contractor company board complaints and investigations 
and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding Matthew S. Banks case number 2208113COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being done, the motion to move it, documents into evidence is approved. Ms. Reberger, did the um, complainants provide a restitution amount? Yes, they did. Um, they're requesting their deposit back of $6,740. No work was ever performed. And was any other additional documentation provided? No, it was not. Thank you. At the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C11, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837D9J, and Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. As to Count 1, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837C11? Motion find guilty on Count 1, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like signed. Being none, count one guilty with a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837C8? Motion to find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed like sign. Being none, uh, count two guilty with a $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837D9J? Motion to find guilty on count three, $1,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, count three guilty with a thousand dollar fine is approved. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of Florida Statute 489-126-2A1? Motion to find guilty on count four, five thousand dollar fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion the guilty. Count four, $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that we order restitution to the complainant in the amount of $6,740 with the ability to come back to the board as necessary. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. The restitution of $6,740 with additional funds as necessary. And that pre- Go ahead, oh. sir. Sorry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. The restitution is approved. Yes, sir. And that previous recommendation to the CILB will be included in this final order. Very good. We go to nine. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2208128COM. It's in regard to Lowell Bassett, the homeowner complainant at 1746 East Marino Street, Pensacola, Florida, City Limits. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Neither the respondent or complainant are present. At this time, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County staff concerning contractor competency board complaints and investigations and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorded transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 2208128COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move documents into evidence is approved. Thank you. Ms. Rebro, was there any additional documentation provided for this case? There was no additional documentation, but um, Mr. Bassett in the previous hearing indicated that a deposit was paid of $14,362.50 and no work was ever performed. Could you repeat that? Sorry, yes. could you repeat that amount again? Yes, restitution would be $14,362.50. Thank you. At the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C11, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837D9J, and Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of, 18, of code section 1837C11? Motion to find guilty on count one, uh, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Count one, found guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837C8? Motion to find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Count two guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of 1837D9J? Motion to find guilty on count three, $1,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, count three guilty, $1,000 fine. As to Count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of Florida Statute 489-126-2A1? Motion to find guilty on count four, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign, being none. Guilty on count four and $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. There was a request for restitution in the amount of $14,362.50. Mr. Chair, I move that we order restitution to the complainant in the amount of $14,362.50 with the ability to approach the board as necessary for more cost. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Being none. The motion for restitution of $14,362.50 and additional funds as presented is approved. And the previous recommendation to the CILB will be included in this final order. Very good. We move to nine. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Only two to go. We got this. I promise. <coughs> Matthew S. Banks, doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, state registered license number RR2828120001, contractor competency board complaint number 2208133COM. It's in regard to Brandy Banks, homeowner complainant at 3550 Molino Road, Molino, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Neither party is present. At this time, I would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing on September 20th, 2022 be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Escambia County staff concerning contractor company board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony as found in the official recorder transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 2208133COM be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign, being none. The motion to move documents into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were there any additional documentation provided for this case? Yes, uh, Ms. Uh, Banks did, uh, Brandy Banks did supply some additional documentation. Uh, no work was performed in her home, so she's requesting $44,725, the total of her deposit. She also took out a construction loan for the work, and currently she's, accru she's accrued $3,014.46. So the total she would be asking for restitution is $47,739.46. Staff will request that that additional documentation um, be moved into evidence. Entertain a motion. Okay. To move it into evidence. Uh, oh, you don't have to read it again. Just say the additional documentation. Yeah, um, I'm, I move for the additional documents to be into evidence. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the documents are moved into evidence. Is approved. Thank you. At the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C11, Code Section 1837C8, Code Section 1837D9J, and Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of Code Section 1837C11? Motion to find guilty on count one, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for guilty of count one and $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837C8? Motion to find guilty on count two, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Count two guilty with $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837 D9J? Motion to find guilty on count $3,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, count three guilty and a thousand dollar fine is approved. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of Florida Statute 489-126-2A1? Motion to find guilty on count four, five thousand dollar fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, count for guilty. $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that we order restitution to the complainant in the amount of $47,739.46 with the ability to approach the board if necessary for more funds. Second. Motion made and second for restitution of $47,739.46 plus any additional uh, monies in the future. It, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to grant $47,739.46 restitution and any additional funds necessary in the future is approved thank you sir and that recommendation previously stated to the cilb will be included in this final order Very our, good. our last item our last item matthew s banks doing business as banks construction llc state registered license number rr 28281201 contractor competency board complaint number 2208138 com it's in regard to Brandon Bonner, the homeowner complainant at 250 East Johnson Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. Proper notice was sent to the respondent and neither party is present. Uh, at this time, staff would request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the September 
20, 2022, probable cause hearing be moved into evidence. I move that all documents and documentation submitted to the Scambia County staff concerning contractor Compsy board complaints and investigation and previous probable cause testimony is found in the official recorded transcript regarding contractor Matthew S. Banks, case number 2208138COM, be entered into evidence for consideration for today's disciplinary hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, all 11 documents are entered into evidence. Is approved. Thank you. Ms. Reber, were any additional documentation provided? No additional documentation was provided, but in the September hearing, all of the evidence um, supports a request for restitution of $112,500. For the record, um, Mr. Bonner is represented by Gerald McKenzie. So when you go to the restitution issue, that may be something that if Gerald McKenzie wants to come back with additional documentation or make any changes, then that would be appropriate for him to handle that, for his attorney to handle that. But there has been, uh, on the record, there has been no uh, information that would counter what that is because that would have to come from Mr. Banks. Thank you. At the probable cause hearing, the board found probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C11, Code Section 1837C6, Code Section 1837D9J, and Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. As to count one, does the board find the respondent in violation of Code Section 1837C11? Motion to find guilty on count one, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, count one guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837C6? Count two, motion to find him guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, count two, guilty, $5,000 fine and revocation is approved. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837 D9J? Motion to find guilty on count $3,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, being none. Count three, guilty with a thousand dollar fine. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of Florida statute 489-126-2A1? Motion to find guilty on count four, five thousand dollar fine and revocation. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, being none. Guilty on count four, five thousand dollar fine and revocation is approved. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion for restitution in the amount of one hundred twelve thousand five hundred dollars with the ability of the attorney Gerald or, McKenzie. Gerald McKenzie. With the counsel or the owner approaching this board for additional funds as necessary. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion for $112,500 with the attorney for Mr. Bonner being able to submit for additional restitution if necessary is approved. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. And that recommendation to the CIOB previously stated will be included in this final order. That concludes our agenda items, but I would like to say a big thank you to Escambie County Environmental Code Enforcement for allowing us to maintain this room and finish out this hearing. I appreciate you guys more than you know, and that is it. Thank you, thank you.